I'm okay. I just smoked another to the face. Yeah, 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 yeah. She wanna stay. Singing to your bitch like I was Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't just try to tell me you love me. Can't keep it real if you really don't trust me. Come on, the real. You hit in the front, so you get my meals. So I'm gunning for the money. Money in the bank. Come on with a dank. Scrolling the tank. Rolling with the gang. You sitting out on the sideline, tripping. I go to the hole with the rock like Pippin'. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm okay. So I think it's it's not his fault, honestly. So I I don't know if you guys saw the video of like Isaiah Stewart Stewart and the screens that he was setting. Mm -hmm. They were like pretty much non-existent, and I think like just having Isaiah Stewart taking those threes, and you have their center who's just gonna sit in the paint, and you have guys like Cade and Ivy. They're driving into two defenders every single possession, and I think that's really hurting like our young guards. And I think there needs to be a conversation had about Isaiah Stewart because I just. I don't see how he's impacting this team positively. Is he can't, you know, catch lobs. He's not a great finisher around the rim. His shooting, you know, he's taking 4.5 threes a game. He's only shooting 22% on them. I think he's hurting this team right now more than he's helping and I think specifically he's hurting these young guards clogging up the lane, you know, for guys like Cade who are, you know, dri like I said driving into two defenders and, and being forced to make tough shots. So I don't think I'm not worried about Cade. I just think he needs to be put in better positions to succeed, and I don't think he's getting that opportunity right now. This mofo spitting. He's spitting. Oh, my land. He's spitting for sure. Paul OJ. I'm impressed. I, I agree. That's a certain, I mean, even like, uh, you, actually, you're the one who told me this uh, just a couple minutes ago. Sadiq is only averaging one more three-pointer than Isaiah Stewart. Mm -hmm. A guy who's like, <laughs> is like, what, <laughs> your second best three-point shooter? Yeah. Like, that's, we got, come on. Tough, man. Tough. Yeah, um, it's probably a bad idea to start with that. Yeah. It was my bad. Sorry. You yeah, haven't heard? We, uh, we lost John Kloss. We uh, got into an accident last night. Um, 22nd birthday today. Kid that we brought in here. And, uh, Fucking crushed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you took, took every opportunity that he had to do something, and and, and, and ran with it. And... If you didn't know John, like uh, outside of that moment and other moments he had, like on the show and shit like that, like he's he's the reason why I was fucked up, dude. He's a good kid, great kid, man. <sighs> great. You guys know how much of degenerates we are, like. We... <laughs> We could never get him to do bad things, drink or whatever, and uh, really quiet. And you guys know, like, whenever we have someone new on the show, as far as like interns go, like, we usually give him a hard time. Chris had a nickname. <laughs> he had a, he had a thug through for a minute there. We had cheese nibs. Like everyone's gotten bullied a little bit, you know. And I'm, John's kind of reserved and, and to himself again, like outside of like the moment you see him here. And like, I'm thinking we got to pick on him a little bit to fire him up. And like, we went to him. And he fucking killed it. Yeah. Like, not only did was he speak, like, clean and precisely, he actually had, like, like solid-ass takes. Like, and that, even that video, again, like, I, I, I wanted to, you, we pick on everybody. The chat, you guys are toxic as fuck, like, for that reason, right? Yeah. I had nothing to say, but that motherfucker was spitting because he was, man. Really passionate about the stuff he cared about. Uh, baseball, I, wrestling's for sure number one. Yeah. WWE wrestling, and I wish I'd give him, like, that the highlight, but I don't. I don't partake that much. I know the Rock's <laughs> killing things right now. Tigers got a win for him yesterday, so shout out to them. Shout out to John and then uh, Pistons, too. But that was his element, man. So if you, you put him in that corner and you allowed him to, you know, put a microphone from him where most people would crumble, no, that motherfucker was spitting because he loved those things. He's very passionate about all those things, wrestling, baseball. Uh, try to give him listen to a little bit of rap music. He's more of a country guy, although he did like Polo, Polo, Polo G. G. So his nickname yeah. ended up being Polo J. Remember, Chris was salty about that because it was it was a fly <laughs> thing, man. It, it was, it was, it worked. It worked very, it worked very well, man. He just he had he had one of the best hearts of anybody I knew. Like, he's a, he's a nice pure. kid, man. He's a good kid. Like I said, he every opportunity that he was given, he took it and he made the most of it. This is a kid who's would have been turning twenty two years old today. <laughs> Fuck it. He's in the prime of his life. He was making a name for himself and in 
in what he wanted to do. He was getting opportunities with, with Tigers minor league teams and, and doing different things, calling games for, for Oakland. And it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. It's, it's, it can be brought in here. Fucking. Yeah. We got in trouble for bringing kids <laughs> yeah, in here. Yeah. But that's why motherfuckers are here. So we bring them here. Yeah. We give them a voice, you know? But, I mean, that's the other part, too. Like, bust his ass off in what he's truly passionate about. You want to know what his plan B was, bro? To be a, a fucking therapist. And yeah. he's working with special needs kids on the side, bro. Yeah. He's just a genuine kid. A good kid, man. <sighs> fucking. Amazing guy. Hold your loved ones tight, man. Tell, t- tell them you care about them because this shit. Anything can happen, man. It's just. <sighs> it's hard to put into words. <sighs> we are just talking to him yesterday. Literally. <laughs> about, about, <laughs> about the clip for the show. Yeah. But. Literally. <laughs> talking shit to him. Because, again, that's how we are. And, again, his first time on, we would have talked shit to him. But he, he fucking knocked out the park. And, oh. sorry. Uh, I, I don't plan on crying. Again, the clip in the beginning of the show was probably a bad idea on my part. So, I'm sorry for that. Nick, Chris, the floor is yours. If you guys like to say anything. And thoughts and prayers to his family, first and foremost. Um, yeah. I, John was just... An absolute, you know, a saint. When I got brought in here, I was super intimidated, uncomfortable. And in the back, he made it feel like a family atmosphere off rip because he wasn't trying to, you know, outshine anybody. He just wanted everybody to be their best self. And he was so passionate and genuine in everything he cared about. I was just texting with him this week and he was fired up for opening day. Hell yeah. And he was talking about starting at Wayne State potentially and moving downtown and looking for roommates. And it just it just blows because there's so many dirtbags in the world that, like, get a fucking chance and he doesn't get to. And it sucks because he's a goddamn angel. And I pray for his family and everybody that got that was blessed to get an opportunity to know the guy and meet him because they know how much of a great guy that he is. Yeah, he is. He was a great guy. I mean, you know, we we did a we did a little side podcast for for my stuff one time, and we would just always always talk basketball. And he just there's nothing more to say other than other than pure. Like he was just the guy that always brought forth the best energy. Always took everything, and like you said it perfectly, man. He just. He he never wa- he always wanted what he wanted, but he never wanted to come at the at at the sp- at the expense of somebody else. He wanted everybody to be their best. He was childlike in the best sense possible, in the best way possible. Yeah, and, he's pure heart. Yeah, and you know, I just I have so much prayers and thoughts to his family. My my mother, when I told her the story, because our old neighbors used to are now his family's current neighbors, mm-hmm. and so. We were we were talking about it, and my mom broke down and cried, and she said, "You know, I can't imagine burying my burying my son." So it's just <gasps> it's it's tough, man. It's yeah, it's it's heartbreaking. Uh, prayers to everyone that got the privilege to know him, mm-hmm. and you know, this show and this heavyweights show going forward is always for him and. Yeah, everything he represents. Yeah, I'm glad we got to give him that opportunity to have a clip of him talking on the show. Because like, yeah. if yeah. not, you guys would have known who he was. You know, you guys would have known Polo J. And it's not that he was on all the time or not, but he worked a lot behind the scenes. But bust his ass behind the scenes. <laughs> and if you don't know what happened, uh, he went out last night, presumably for his birthday. That's today. He was supposed to be 22 today. By the way, John wasn't a drinker too, so don't, I don't suspect that at all. But yeah. uh, they went on the jet skis out in Brandenburg Park in Chesterfield, and assume they crashed into each other. Him and his boy, his buddy, was rescued, and John was found at 12 p.m. today. Um, lots of prayers to his family, and just they raised a good kid, smart kid, really passionate kid. Like, Such a- a kid had such a fucking bright future ahead of him too. That's like, like he's so he's, he's so much further than where where I was at his age with oh yeah with the, with the, with the shit. You're and, a real piece of shit. Though. Yeah, I was <laughs> fucking degenerate at 22, man. It's, it's, and 
you know, it was my fucking senior year of college. And I hadn't done anything other than worried. Fucking kid was already at his foot in the door. Yeah. He was already doing stuff. Like I said, he was getting job offers from different minor league sources from, from the Tigers. And it's just... Just hate to see this kind of shit, man. Like, like Nick said, there's just there's so many terrible people out there that yeah, you just keep seeing how and, and just such a good kid like this, to be, his life to be cut so short, man. It's, it it doesn't make sense sometimes, but you know, well, God bless him. God bless his family. Yeah, he's he's I know it's cliche, but he's in a better place now. For sure, bro. That's. That's how I feel though too, because like he like his short time here, bro, did everything he wanted to do. I mean, he was pursuing the things he wanted to do. Like yeah. a lot of times, no offense to anyone, but like a lot of times people just sit around wishing, hoping for those opportunities, or wishing they had pursued those opportunities, and he did to the fullest. Even though he was reserved and, and kind of quiet, he came in immediately and was like, "Hey, can you follow me on Inst or on Twitter?" Yeah. So I can, uh, hey, yeah, both of us, can yeah. you guys follow me and match to share the story in the back. You know, yeah. <laughs> first time he met, I was like, "Hey, you think you helped me cover the tiger?" Yes. <laughs> but he's so quiet; you never expect like that'd be the first stuff oh, to come out of his mouth. He's about man. his fucking grind, man. Yeah, man. It's, For he's sure, about his man. Grind, dude. And it's like a, it's like a blissful like ignorance too. You know, like yes. he doesn't, he doesn't realize that people could take it like, "Oh, you're asking for favors when I don't know you." He's just like. <laughs> He's just so excited to, he's just so excited to do it, man. So, yeah, he's an incredible guy. When I did the podcast, I was wearing this shirt, so that's why I had to throw it on for him. Yeah, um, we were talking Pistons, man. Just, man. for me too, man. Guy. He's a good kid, man. He's a really good kid. I, uh, I mean, I obviously hasn't known me before, like over sports, but like, uh, you know, one of my closest family members that moved in my aunt when I first graduated high school, and just to get in a better situation, didn't grow up the best. And so I grew, moved in with my aunt and my cousin I was really, really close with. And he died when he was 18, similar fashion, uh, drowning. And I just know what it's like for his family too, because like the same situation, like he's missing. So we're like, yeah. Yo, there's a chance, there's a chance. And then it's that's, not, yeah. is what it is. That's when it really hit me, it was when they- That's Drew, and then that's, like, maybe I'll get one for John. <sighs> but yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll wipe these tears and they will shed and they'll still be in our thoughts. We're going to move on. We are going to talk sports. Uh, Al Carson will be joining the show at uh, 542. <laughs> Poor guys walk into a fucking <laughs> us being all fast. sad and shit. Yeah, let's, let's, let's fix that before Al gets here. But I guess any more words before we pay bills? Just keep his family... Keep him in your prayers. It's you said I can't imagine what it'd be like to lose lose a son, lose a brother. I've, yeah. I've unfortunately a couple friends of mine have died in the past past few years, and it's just seeing with someone so young. It, it's it never gets easier. Yeah, I just feel for his fan. They raised a great kid. Fuck yeah, you guys. Yeah. You know he raised a great kid. It, he made everybody who's around smile. He affected touched a lot of people's lives. And, one more, one more truth to expose too. We, so John, as I can put in the chat, kid could take a joke, because I remember we, from the haircut. The haircut, yeah. You guys are giving the nickname Polio J. He never actually shaved his head. That's yeah. actually an old photo. Yeah. That he had sent in. Yeah, that was uh, pre him getting roasted about the hair. Yeah. There was a crazy story for the reason why he shaved his head or whatever. I don't remember what it was. Yeah. Actually, I remember one time too. <laughs> Because again, remember John so reserved that uh, he was going to Macomb Community College um, for for therapy, whatever. And, and yeah. for whatever reason, he had to he had to do something in class where he had to pretend to be a, another oh, person. Yeah. <laughs> and he put on that wig. Yeah. <laughs> but he sent the video to me randomly yeah. <laughs> without any context. Just John in a black wig, like female yeah. hair wig. <laughs> and I'm just like, yo, what is going on? But. He waited to give me the backstory, so it was super. It was super random, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Like, you love you, John Kloss. You left the impact on us, and uh, you won't be forgotten. I'll, I'll make sure of it. Amazing. Uh, it, it's it's amazing to leave such a strong impact in such a short time. Yeah. It really speaks to who he is. Love you, brother. Legend. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Legends never die. Fuck yeah, legend man. Exo screens. His family have a GoFundMe. Not that I'm aware of. Um, 
But if he does, I'll make sure. We'll make sure to share that. Yeah, we'll make sure to send all information. We'll sure, make sure to share that. You know, obviously it's still very, very raw. But yeah. uh, when stuff comes out, we'll make sure to send it. But we do have to go to break. Fortunately, life moves on. Um, let me tell you about Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness is the home of the Judgment Free Zone, where anyone can uh, feel comfortable and work on their fitness goals. At Planet Fitness, you experience a squeaky clean gym, full body workout in 30 minutes. All memberships include fitness training. You get all this for just $10 a month, no commitment. No matter where you are, there's Planet Fitness close by. More than 50 in Metro Detroit, and thousands more throughout the world. Planet Fitness, free fitness is essential. Feel alive during Feldman Chevrolet's biggest New Year's sales event ever. Get the best prices on our huge selection of award-winning Chevrolets. Like this 2024 Equinox for $188 per month. Or this 2024 Silverado for $268 per month. It's the New Year's sales event going on now at Feldman Chevrolet, Michigan's number one Chevy dealer. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Is that an octopus in your pants or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings from Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Are you tired of wearing the same old Detroit sports merch? It's a new era in sports wearables, new design, amazing appeal, the ultimate swag. Check out Woolworth Sports' latest gear at WoolworthSports.com by clicking the shop tab. They got hoodies, tees, hats, everything you need. Head on over to WoolworthSports.com, click the shop tab today, and get yourself some brand new merch. What up and welcome to World of Live on WoolworthSports.com. My boy Easy Joe, my guy Spin Rex, young Chris. Nicholas Koloff, John Kloss with us. Uh, did I? S I don't think I sent this one to you, Chris. Partly my bad. I, I, I guess I'll get it to you. Um, Why well, just blame me for old time's sake? Yeah. Piece of shit, Chris. Motherfuck. <laughs> I love you, Chris. Um, it was essentially Dan Campbell did a one-on-one -on -one with um, Detroit Lions beat reporter. Oh, is this what you said before. at uh, the morning? I got no, it. no, 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 no. That's that's a different one. Okay. Um, essentially, Dan Campbell. Actually, I sent, I sent one on Twitter. If I did send it, it would have been on Twitter, but I don't think I did. Either way, Dan Campbell was speaking with Tim Twenty Men, and uh, Tim Twenty Men's like, you know, great successful season, um, first playoff win, all that jazz. What's next? And uh, Dan Campbell mentioned the word trophy, trophies, and. For other organizations, that might be normal to hear. You know, it, you might be accustomed to your, your head coach talking about winning Super Bowls. Uh, here in Detroit, we're accustomed to them talking about you know, getting to the next step, rebuilding. Yeah. And now we're finally at a point where the next step is a Super Bowl trophy, Spencer. And it, it just hit different for me. Did you catch it by chance? I, I'll find it if you didn't. Uh, no, I didn't, but he's right. It's We've already, you know, we got... Two trophies to check off the list. We already got the NFC North. Now we need the NFC in the Super Bowl. And this uh, this is the expectations you have now. This is the world you live in. If you're the Detroit Lions, you are you are a contender. You are uh, you are a juggernaut in the NFC now, and those are your expectations. It's the same as what the 49ers have been dealing with the past couple of years. The same with what the Eagles have been dealing with the past couple of years is if you don't win the Super Bowl, your season's a failure. That's it. Was, it was cute last year to get that playoff win, to win that division, to get the two playoff wins for the first time in however many years. 
to get into the NFC Championship game for the first time in however many years. You know, those are cute. Those those are fun. It's good to get those monkeys off of our backs as Lions fans where you can say, oh, I've won a playoff game in my lifetime. But now, now you're one of the big boys. Now you're sitting at the adult table. And now it's if you don't win a Super Bowl, your season's a failure. That's what the expectations are going forward. I'm sure that's what the expectations are in that building in Allen Park, all throughout that locker room. Yeah. That we're not just satisfied with winning a playoff game. We're not satisfied. And I know it's, it kind of sounds greedy for me to say this because we haven't won one in 30 years or whatever it was. I don't even remember anymore because that shit's old. We don't talk about the past. But now you are looked at as one of the top three teams in the NFC almost unanimously. And so you got to go out there and be that. If you don't win the Super Bowl next year, it's a failure of a season flat out. I'm, I'm with you. Um, I'm at a different point in this Lions season where – and, and it's, it's been this way too for a minute, by the way. That's why we've been at odds a lot of times in the chat, or myself personally, with like wanting to, to trade for a Chase Young. Um, I don't know much stuff that I'm plugged in here. Do you hear this better? You're good. I was just playing with it. It was getting a little fuzzy. Okay. Uh, that's why we've been at odds when it comes to trading for a Chase Young. Um, when it comes to, which I actually have zero complaints from this offseason. They actually swung it out of the park. Um, but I think this year is the year where you kind of have to, you have to do something. And then something isn't anything. That something is a Super Bowl appearance and or championship. If they make it there, at least I could say they gave us a fighting chance to do it. And that's why I'm accepting of the appearance in itself. But Obviously, the championship is what you truly want, and I feel like you should be able to have those expectations of this team. If you guys are going to hit the chat or hit Twitter or hit wherever you may be and say that, you know, so-and-so is an MVP candidate and so-and-so is a top 10 this and so-and-so is the best that, well, then the conversation should be Super Bowl, uh, and especially where you have one of the best offensive play callers in the league and Ben Johnson, in my opinion, and I just, as much as he's come back miraculously time after time again, uh, I can't guarantee that for next year just yeah. because of like where, where, how he's viewed in the league. Uh, the Washington Commanders essentially put out a hit piece because they're so embarrassed they were turned down by him. Yeah. But everybody knew better. Nobody took that hit piece and, and, and ran with it as, as true. It was like, nah, this guy's just about his shit. And he wanted to return to Detroit. And as Amon Ross St. Brown said in his podcast, there's unfinished business. And I think that Ben Johnson's true to that. And when Dan Campbell speaks trophies, I think they mean it. I don't think this team is done coming to the training camp. I don't think this team will be done coming to the trade deadline, which is now moved the week back to uh, week nine now. But uh, I, I'm, I expect and demand, uh, at very least, NFC Championship this year. And you look at it even from the national perspective of how different it is. Yeah, a couple of years ago, you know, it was, oh, look out for this Lions team. Look out for these Lions teams. Oh, they're, they're a cute story. They're a fun story. Now it's like we got to beat these Now guys. it's, yeah, Mike Greenberg saying their Super Bowl window is closed. They're not talking about us as a cute team anymore. They're talking about us as somebody that is this in that same elk. The, the, the things they make about the Cowboys, the stuff they make about the 49ers, the, stuff they, the topics they make about the Eagles. Now they're making those topics about the Detroit Lions. Yeah. Because we are in that same situation. We are undoubtedly a top four team in the NFC. I think we are a top three, maybe even two. I don't know. The Eagles Eagles got better, so I'd, I'd say top three comfortably. But you you, you got expectations now, and you got to go out, the, out, out there and achieve them. It's, this isn't your, your, your whore grandmother's Lions. This is this, not your whore grandmother's This is the brand Detroit new Detroit Lions. Lions, and they are juggernauts in the NFC. They are contenders, and they're going to win a Super Bowl in the next five years. See, that's where that's where I, that's why I'm so demanding of this year because the next five years is a little murky for me. It's going to happen. A little murky for I me. I believe in Brad Holmes and this organization to rebuild whenever good teams go through situations like losing a Ben Johnson, losing a Sean McVay, losing a Kyle Shanahan, losing a – and when – who lost Kyle Shanahan? Falcons. Falcons. Falcons not a notoriously great organization with great yeah. upper management. Uh -huh. But look at the fucking Rams. They lose a great offensive mind well, every year. The offensive look at, mind is their head coach. Sean yeah, McVay. but still, I'm just saying, you, you, you don't think guys like Mike McDaniel are coveted on that coaching staff? 
good teams are going to lose good coordinators and good players. And That's good front offices rebuild those teams to keep them going. Uh, I, uh, listen, I'll say this. Um, and, and actually, this is one of the things that Al wanted to talk about when he came in as well, too. But uh, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Is the, he's a passing game coordinator for us now. Tanner Strand. Tanner Strand. That, that, that is your Mike McDaniel in, in the wing. And if, and if I, don't forget, though, he's already taken offensive coordinator interviews before. Yeah. The Seahawks and whoever else they may have been. As long as we're able to keep a piece of that, I'll be fine with it. I can't say the next five years unless I know we have a piece of that Ben Johnson lineage. Pause, because his last name is Johnson, I guess. But unless we have a piece of that, like, in stock or in store. Yeah. I, I can't really speak to the next five years. That's Somebody why I'm so in the, in the cupboard. Yeah. And I think that's why like this year too, like Brad has done some uncharacteristic things in terms of like trading for the Carlton Davis, um, going out there and paying a DJ reader. Yeah. Like, I know it's not much, but it, in terms of like the, the Brad Holmes history, that's a lot. They know. The, the most he's ever spent on a, a restricted free agent, you know, and, and I think it's not done either. Matter of fact, the next segment, we're going to maybe have a little bit of debate about, Who's in the right or wrong? Because now it feels like he and Dan Campbell are at at odds a little bit. Yeah, which I'm not. I'm comfortable with. They'll they'll, they'll work it through. Oh, but, I'm definitely comfortable with it. Friends fight. Me and you fucking scream at each oh, other at hey, least at day. least twice a week. Exactly. So me and Flannel yelled at each other today for a good minute. Oh man, because <laughs> he disrespected Malcolm on his birthday. Shout out, happy birthday, Malcolm Rodriguez. By the birthday way, birthday Mal- Ra- Ra- Malcolm Rodriguez. Happy birthday, John Claus. Happy Chris, you want to say John something? Claus. Yeah. At this point, though. At this point, it's about it's about retooling, not rebuilding, right? When you get to the final four, you are no longer a team a, a team that's rebuilding. You are oh yeah, the that, rebuild's over. Yeah, you are a team that's retooling. That's why the five year window makes sense to me because everything Brad Holmes has shown to do, he's been he's shown to find the to find the margins and improve there, which is what the teams have to do when when they get to that contending level. So I have no doubts whether it's a Ben Johnson. You can argue this is our the yeah. Lions' best year, for sure. But at the same time, you can't argue that it's going to be their only year, and this is it, and it's Super Bowl or bust. Well, you should expect to contend for a Super Bowl this year. It is not just a one-year window, and they've been very clear about that. They've spoken of that. Brad Holmes, Sheila, everybody that's been in this process has spoken about building a championship window that's longer than a year or two years. This is about a multiple season run, about sustained excellence. So Can nothing I, that nothing that's been built so far tells me that this is going to that this is going to be that. It could be the best shot. You never know. Like Dan Campbell may, said, last may I interject? Year. Yeah. Bullshit talks. And that's it to me. I mean, Ben Johnson's a big piece. Of it. <laughs> well, I think there's a second half of that. Yeah. Bullshit talks. Well, money walks, bullshit talks. Yeah. <laughs> but money money walks, right? So if they, if they, if they cash in on the Super bullshit Bowl. Bullshit talks? Brother, bullshit talks. <laughs> <laughs> bullshit <laughs> talks, brother. <laughs> because, because the other part didn't fit at that point. But bullshit talks and, and cash walks. Cash money walks. Like, uh, it's talk right now. You say those things. And I don't think they've even gone in depth like that in the way. And I love you. And I don't mean to tell you. I don't think they've even gone in depth like that. Because I, I think they know what it is. Like. No, they've they've they got to get it. it in, and I think their actions again. Bullshit talks, money walks. Where the money's being spent, they've gone in more this year and this offseason than they have any past years. Giving up a third round pick, and then for a guy who was a big ass cap hit in Carlton Davis, paying DJ Reader the most I've ever paid a guy annually. Then going to get, get Meek Robinson on top of that, and I, I, I tell you again, once more, guys, they're not done. I promise you, they're not. May done. I interject? Yes. May I interject, brother? <laughs> May I interject? And no. kid, I get a hot tub. <laughs> He's, he said that, like Dan Campbell said that last year. I have no, I have no disagreements that they are more aggressive this offseason. They definitely are. But they're not doing anything that's sacrificing their long-term future. That's No, because that's how they operate. Yeah, but it's exactly. definitely out of the norm that the moves they're making. They're definitely more aggressive than in the past. Right. True. But, but Dan Campbell said, he said that that day when they got eliminated in the NFC Championship game. He, did, he, he said, said he don't know if they're going to be back. Yeah, he said, you don't know. He said, do I believe that? No. But after he said guaranteed. all the bad shit, he's like, wait, I got to say something positive here. No, 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 man. That's, that's real. That's real. What if Dan what Campbell I said ever real not too. been real? 
No, he has been real. It was real when he was like, I don't know if we're going to be back here. But I got been back. Are, but both parts are true. You can't just cut off the part of the quote you like. I'm not. I'm just not. Just like bullshit but, talk. But listen. But listen. For my mo- Again, I, and I'll give myself credit this, for this because I was right when we had the big ass argument about the interesting. interesting. Emotional intelligence would tell you, he, in my mind at least, he had that last line. Because he's like, oh, fuck, wait, I got <laughs> I'm, I'm getting, and he's an emotional guy. We know that, too. We've seen him cry at the podium, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like he had mentioned that to, like, save the face, the energy a little bit. And I know we're over, but I'm, we're, we're going over because Nick has something else to say, too. Yeah, we were right there talking about these trophies. It's not like this was a pipe dream. We literally blew a 17-point lead in the NFC Championship game where we should have been playing for the Super Bowl. We let that slip away. There's no doubt about it. So when he talks about trophies, they're on a mission, 100%. And yet he has brought in some top-tier talent on the defensive side of the ball because they're the guys that let up this lead. I know our offense turned the ball over a couple times, but this offense is what it really, or this defense is what needed to be upgraded, and there were upgrades made. And Dan Campbell can see that, and that's why I believe he's talking trophies now. And when you're tied for fifth in Super Bowl odds, the whole league sees that too. Like The mm-hmm. Lions are a threat, and I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon, but this team is no doubt on a mission to get back there. And the one, <clears throat> one other little thing too, um, in terms of like the, the bullshit talks and, and the money walks, is like they could, they could say that all day. They could say to the boo in the face. Let me see it on the field. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, the same, the same form of fashion <laughs> you could speak to, and, and maybe this is a little bit disrespectful in this way, and, and I know it's going to be taken that way, but what did Troy tell us this year? Yeah. They wanted to compete yeah. all 82 games. Eat shit, Troy. 82 games. But then, what, what, what did the Tigers tell us? I'm saying, like, everyone's going to say they want spend, to win and pursue other but things. But Troy didn't you know? spend on, like, the top talent that we wanted. Exactly. Compared Bullshit to the Lions. Bullshit talks. Too. But your actions will truly tell you what's going on. Yeah. The reactions of them being over aggressive this year might be the year. The Lions actions, yeah. The Lions actions in the preseason or in the yeah, in the preseason, the off season have shown us yeah. that they're actually gonna try to do it. If 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 they were just saying we're gonna try to we got unfinished business, blah blah blah, what do they do? They re sign bugs, they re sign, you know, uh Benito Jones. No. Yeah. They're actually trying to compete. They go out and get a exactly. DJ Reed. Exactly. They they're tra- they're just bullshitting. They re-signed a Jerry Jacobs and Kettleville. No, they went out there and got two starting cornerbacks. Yeah. Like, so I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see what they do this year. And I do think this is the year where we're not screaming at, at the fans at the trade deadline. I really do. No, I think I think Brad, depending on where they're at and what they look like, obviously. But I if we don't Brad's... make a move, I'm coming for all your asses again. Pause. No ditty. <laughs> no ditty. No ditty. But <laughs> let me tell you guys about Lady Jane's. You can come get your hair cut by the beautiful Bethany. Awesome is when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Stop in, sit back, and relax, and let one of Lady Jane's talented stylists make you feel great. Walk in anytime, seven days a week. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Since 1996, Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide a fast, convenient, and first-class car buying experience called the Feldman Advantage. 
With 18 locations, there's a Feldman dealership in your backyard. Visit FeldmanAuto.com to find the location nearest you and catch Woodward Sports Network live from Feldman Chevrolet of Novi every other Monday. Feldman Chevrolet, Detroit's number one Chevy dealer. Bonjour. Welcome back to World of Heavyweights, live on sports.com. First piece, John Claus. I'm easy. Let's be more racks. Young go. Chris. First piece, John Nicholas Claus. Koloff. Smash that like button. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Share the stream. Now is where things are about to get pretty interesting. And it's a segment we wanted to do yesterday. We weren't able to get it off, but it's a little bit of a blessing for today because it's, it's a hell of a segment. It's one that I found myself perplexed by, and I haven't really allowed myself to even come with a, a, a side I want to choose. But, Chris, I'll, I'll let you do the parts. And either video you want to play first, whether the Brad Holmes or Dan Campbell, it does not matter to me. Just play the other, and then we'll play the other one, and we'll, we'll spot the differences, if you will. I want you guys to pay attention, close attention to both these videos. All right, first we'll play the Brad Holmes. Very, very careful. Yeah, I mean, look, if you're playing football, it's always a risk. Um, I, I mean, there, there, there's, there's so much luck involved with injuries. Um, I, you know, as long, long as you're, as long as you're playing football, there's, there's always risk of, you know, again. Look at Emmanuel Mosley. I mean, that, what happened? He, he had bad luck, you know. Um, so, what, what's hard for us is to say, you know what, man? We're not that excited. For some reason, it is impossible for technical directors to eat, Chris. select the right video. When we're trying to have the discussion. Maybe it's not meant to be. Maybe we're not meant what to pit the these guys fuck? against each other. Yeah, it's uh, the football gods. <laughs> yeah, the football gods are forbidding this action, which I'm okay with because it does. It is uneasy, but I'll just go out and say it, and then we'll play the videos if we have to, if you want to. But at the presser, Brad or Dan Campbell had his first, and he was asked, you know, after the release of Cam Sutton, is uh, cornerback an urgency for this team? And essentially, Dan Campbell said, "Yeah, uh, we're definitely still looking in the free agent market, and if it comes to draft time, hopefully we walk away with a piece there." Following day. Uh, Brad Holmes makes his way to, to Florida, Orlando, for the owners' meetings, and he's asked the same question. I think once the first time was, was Justin Rogers. second time was Dave Burkett. Dave Burkett asked Brad Holmes, hey, what's up with the cornerback position? Is it, a, is it a need now that you no longer have Cam Sutton? Do you, ha- do you have one, either one of these videos, Chris? Don't trip if not. I'll just... I'm getting the Brad okay. Holmes one right now. So then Brad Holmes essentially says, no, it's, it's not a need. Uh, we're going to hit this draft class, and we're going to do what we've always done. Play the Brad Holmes one, so that's what we're talking about right now. Well, like I said, I mean, like, I'm not, I, yeah, it's not, it's, it's not a need. It's not like, man, if we don't look, when it comes to cornerbacks, you never have enough of those guys, you know, um, which I can say that with a lot of different positions. Um, so. So that was Brad Holmes saying it's not a need. Telling you quarterback is not a need. Cornerback. And, and, and if you expounded on that too, like, listen, we're going to go BPA. It's not a need. We're not tripping. We're not, you know, whatever. But then here's Dan Campbell asked that same question just, just a day prior. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, certainly there's still some some guys we're looking at in free agency that can uh, bring in some competition um and then you know we're and, and that may or may not be done before the draft you know i mean we're i know that it it um brings up a little more urgency for another player uh for sure that can compete um but then as far as everything else goes we're ready to go into the draft you know and see what we can see if we come away with something in there so we got, we got differing opinions on the matter. It's Trouble not, in paradise. Yeah, it's not like spinning eyes opinions. Like our opinions at the end of the day don't really matter. Yeah. We don't have control of this team whatsoever. But you have the general manager of the team saying one thing and then the head coach of the team saying another. Oh, it's interesting. I guess what, what is your reaction? Whose side are you on? Who? I mean, I do, it's definitely a need. It's definitely a need, but we know that Brad Holmes doesn't address needs in the draft anyways. So I think he's saying like, what Brad Holmes is saying is that he's not going to reach for a cornerback or it's, he's not going to force his hand to grab a cornerback in the draft. But what, what Dan Campbell is saying is that they need another cornerback on this team. 
So whether it be free agency or the draft, they definitely need another cornerback. While Brad Holmes is saying he's not going to be forced into drafting a cornerback just because they don't have one. But they're, I, th- I think they're going to grab one, whether it be free agency or wherever. Yeah, I think it's neat. Um, only because of like what we experienced last year. And I think that's probably where Dan Campbell's coming from. Like Obviously, Brad structures the roster. Dan's in practice with these guys. Dan's the guy who has to deal with like the frustrations. I mean, let's be real about it. Like When things are going wrong, the first guy the finger's pointing to, maybe you could say quarterback, but outside of that, it's the head coach, right? And so, like, you lose Emmanuel Mosley, and Dan Campbell's under fire a little bit. Like, what's, what's fucking going on? You guys had three years to get this defense right, and probably throw AG in there, too, which is Dan Campbell's boy, by the way. Traveled from New Orleans with him to come rebuild things in here in Detroit. He wants a cornerback. I don't know if he, need, he needs one or wants one to start per se because they don't just hand out starting jobs when you sign the contract they hand out starting jobs when you earn it in training camp and I think the concern here is like is everyone gonna be available to battle because we talked about Brad Holmes fetish for the injured players it's it's a, it's a real thing it just I is. want it I yeah, want can make it whatever I want excuse it. he needs for it and I love Brad Holmes regardless and I definitely understand like the gamble on it all but guys get hurt and Amik as much as we I have high expectations for him um at 5'8 We'll see how, he's, like, how it stands out this year when, in terms of starting a full 17-game season at that size. I think Dan Campbell just wants a little bit of a restoral or a little bit of a, a contingency plan there. Mm-hmm. And, and again, competition. Just competition in the room, I think he's always asking for. And I would be – I want to be a veteran piece just because, I, again, we're, we're the same situation I told you guys last segment. We're contending for a Super Bowl. Yeah. I think that's the expectation this year. So I, I want a veteran piece who's been there. Stephon Gilmore, if you still looking, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm interested if you're interested. Um, but I, I guess if, if, if Amik is there and, and Emmanuel does end up being healthy at some point, maybe you could easily um, – I don't want to use the word easily, but maybe you could ease a rookie into it um, as the season progresses. But I would be more comfortable with a veteran. And that's what, I, that's what I think he's saying. I, again, I don't think Brad Holmes is saying, no, we're good at cornerback. You know, no more cornerbacks. Don't worry about that. It's like his philosophy on the draft that he told us before. We said it's not a need. You don't address needs in the draft. And so, for me, what he's saying is he's not going to be forced into grabbing Kool-Aid at 29 or forced into grabbing a cornerback at 29 because that's a need. It's He's going to do we'll what he does in the draft and draft best player available. The question goes beyond the draft, though. Where it's so much acquiring cornerback. But he didn't talk about it beyond the draft. He didn't say anything about free agency. He just said that. Well, no, they asked if you're going to grab a cornerback. I don't, I don't think it was a draft. Yeah, a when draft he talked question. about the draft. Because when they, again, in his we, answer, he explained thing, it based the, on the draft. He didn't explain I don't think it. He explained on the draft. I think he just meant in plain general because he used the word need. And he's never going to address a need in the draft. So he says it's not a need. It's just not a priority on his mind. Yeah. And that's how I took it. I don't think he was asked specifically the draft. I think. Trying to spin him out of it that way, I, it's, it's not that. I think there is uh, discussions to be had, and maybe and maybe he's just being coy. I mean, we know that in general managers that that, that is a, a badge they have is kind of being on a low, not in a sketchy sense, but being on a low in terms of like what the next move is. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe that's it. Maybe they don't want a, a so guy that they're, they're they're currently speaking to that they are desperate to sign him. You know what I'm saying? Maybe like, go ahead, talk to somebody else. Some man fuck. better be like Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell yelling at each other. And yes. in the middle be like, right? That's what disagreement I want. between, yeah. Yeah, like Civil War. Super Civil War poster yeah. or some shit. Yeah. Not the old one. I'm talking about Marvel Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> so it put some Order players Brad on Holmes side. is fighting for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, ET's in the far. backseat of the car like, guys, don't break up. Yeah. Summerax hates FedEx, says the Ski Max boy. You hate who? FedEx. I don't, I don't why would, problem why with FedEx. That, that's a why wild that a thing. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. There's uh, Ski Max keeps telling me I hate everything. Everybody's hate, saying I hate stuff in the chat. Please, please tell me things. why you always hate. They said, uh, you hate me, you hate me. I said, no, the only people I hate are Lorena Rios and Brandon Katz. Yeah, Lorena's not on the good side, that's for sure. I tried she's giving her some bail yesterday. She just talks shit. All, all she does yeah. is talk shit. And then if you say something about it, she's like, you ain't mean to me. A lot of people they just don't talk do shit. Like, Sounds fuck? exactly like her. That's what I'm saying, too. And I'm like, I'm not going to go that far because I know there's like real haters out there. But like, I'm at the point where it's like, I, don't ever be offended. Or you could be offended. I don't give a fuck. But like, don't <laughs> talk shit and then just like play victim after. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. I've always been that. Yeah, like, you like, stupid motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, but, right. but when I call you a dumb bitch afterwards, no. it's like, yeah, exactly. No. Exactly. Yeah. You can't do that. Like, yeah. don't. Don't. It's fair game. You swing, I'm swinging back. Spank I'm sorry. Hey, I love dogs. I'm not kicking puppies. I love dogs. I just don't want them in the grocery store. But two guys you don't want swinging at each other 
are the two heads of this dragon, and it's Brad Holmes and Tank Campbell. Yes. And luckily, I just think this is a play here by Brad. Honestly, I think it's simple as that because he doesn't want to give up any draft strategy. He doesn't want them, <laughs> you know, trading up for a corner, or they don't want, you know, a guy falling to them or trading back. I think it's just strictly strategy here from Brad, and maybe Dan kind of slipped up there. And like said, it was a need. That's why I think so too. And I and because Dan wears his heart on his sleeve, you know, like he yeah. will tell you how it is. Yeah. And I believe that's what happened in this scenario. Personally, Damn it, Nick, I want to be controversial of it, but that's exactly what this is in my mind. It's Dan wearing his heart on his sleeve, saying what it is. That's is what it is. And Brad's trying to play GM, play coy, keep his cards close to his vest. Yeah, he had the, his heart on his sleeve and accidentally put a knife in brad's back <laughs> hey what a bar damn a nick bar. okay let's go oh uh, we'll we get back we'll be joined by al carson we'll get his opinion on the matter as well as make him take uh two shots of gin forcefully because <laughs> he doesn't need a chaser he's a hard ass chris well, did you like that bar or what that was a bar i approve i approve of the bar i go, think it was go the, ahead it, it, go it, ahead clear out, clear clear out. out. <laughs> it was the ai drake hey give, give one give for us him a 16. He's, taking, he's taking a shot give us the 16 right now nick <laughs> Okay. Let's go. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are we going to? What? What's the read? Uh, is it me? Uh, the read is. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. Jack Easy, Lab. tell us about Swiss. <laughs> Jack, or Swiss. It is Swiss. I was, I was wondering why you said Jack Lab. I don't know. Hey guys, that is, was your, is your insurance company uh, getting over on you? And even if you don't know, you could know by contacting my guy Mark. That's Mark at SwissInvest.com, or just simply visit the website, check out some prices, SwissInvest.com. But more specifically, hit up my guy Mark. Make sure you send him your mock drafts. I know he's getting his money's worth. It's Mark at SwissINS.com. We'll be right back with Al Carson, the football guy. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the offseason smells good. Woodward Sports. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows That's how. Good. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Walk into any Lady Jane's haircuts for men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Game is one in the trenches, and our big fellas don't mess around. The Woodward Heavyweights on Woodward Sports. Better than crispy chicken and pizza while watching your favorite team play. Let me tell you about Soroki's crispy chicken and pizza. Their food is amazing. Their locations are popping up all over Metro Detroit. A perfect takeout option featuring hand-breaded fried chicken, New York pizza, fresh salad, sides, and more. Check out their full menu. Find the closest location near you at Sorokis.com. That's S-A-R-O-K-I-S.com. Sorokis and Wilbert Sports. Now that's crispy. What up, though, everybody? And welcome back to the Wilbert Heavyweights live on WilbertSports.com. Rest in peace, John Kloss. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you share the stream. It means more than you know. I'm Spencer. We got Chris. We got Nick. Easy's taking a dump or something. But now <laughs> we are joined by our guy, Al, the football guy. Al, you wanted to chime in about what we were talking about right before you came on with Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell seemingly have different differing opinions on if cornerback is a need or not. So well, what are your thoughts on the matter? 
Yeah, uh, my thoughts are, one, Easy needs to start uh, DMing Scott Hansen, figuring out what he does every Sunday, that he doesn't <laughs> have to take a urination station break. That is a good point. Uh, Fika, the young man. Here we are. What's up, buddy? Uh, as far as those quotes, I was actually almost enthused that whatever was said transparently to the public uh, was differing opinions from our GM and our head coach. That is, they're always, you know, um, synchronized. They're always on the same page. Am I taking that? No, you just had to get it off the camera. Okay. Uh, no, no free sponsors. <laughs> but yeah. I'll grab that when you need me to. But, uh, yeah, I, I was thinking how it, it's kind of good that maybe they do. They always have this mind meld, but they maybe have differing thoughts, differing opinions, and they weren't on the same page communicating to the public, which is fine. They don't have to be. They have been in lockstep. Yeah. So, clearly, I think it tells us that at some point, cornerback is something they would like to add to the room, which is reassuring, but I can't be certain it'll be anything before the draft, and I can't be certain it'll be a top 61 pick. Mm -hmm. But um, that was nice to hear um, that, obviously, we lost a player from our depth chart at yeah. cornerback. Yeah. So we're going to have to rebolster that. But one of the coolest things that came out of all that awesome access the media had to both, you know, Rodwood, but also Holmes and Campbell was them talking about how um, they weren't sure they were going to land both Carlton Davis and Amik Robertson. Yeah. That put a uh, uh, wind underneath my freaking wings because that's pretty cool that, one, Amik Robertson still wanted to come here. He wanted to, yeah. yeah. Two, they valued Carlton Davis and Amik Robertson in a similar light mm -hmm. that they're starting caliber players that they want to go back to uh, Aaron Glenn's man defense in. They were getting away from it. They played a little too much zone. We got a little cutesy. Yeah. And, and we're going to go. And Dan Campbell said it was one of the principles of the team. It's like running the ball. It's like defending the run. You need to be able to play man. Cool. We think this highly of Amik Robertson, even though there's a small sample size for him to play man coverage on the outside. Yeah. They might be identifying an ascending player. And that got me pretty pretty jonesed up about yeah. Amik Robertson. And we already were. I, I think the three yeah, of us, we, already, Nick, yeah, we yeah, all yeah. We are on the same page that, like, he's a dog. Yeah. So you're comfortable with him stepping into cornerback two next year? Yeah, I'm fine with that. If he proves – I do want to bring another competition, though. Yes. But I think – Clearly, they view him pretty highly that they thought he wouldn't come to this opportunity and Sutton would have been in the room too. But that's pretty cool that he was a priority A free agent, as Holmes said. Yeah. He was, there was a lot of cornerback targets that were out there yeah. that were discussed, and the fact that he was a option A target says a lot of my belief in, in how they felt he plays man defense on the outside. So that's pretty cool. But the thing I do really, it's going to bother me if we don't do is if we don't get competition for that position. Because right yes. now, There's if none. you look the last four years, Manuel Mosley, mm -hmm. all of six snaps, week five last year. Yeah. Great player when he's on the field. 2021, he was great for San Francisco. He's a great story, undrafted free agent. Mm -hmm. But still limited too, by the way. Missed a couple games that year as well. Yeah. Exactly. It's all he has not even he's played, I think, forty eight. 44%, 44.7% yeah. of the snaps the last four seasons. Less than half. We can't rely on him. We went into last season relying on him as our CB2. I think if there's any lesson learned, we can't rely on him to be our CB3 this year. He needs mm -hmm. to be pushed down the depth chart, and if he proves it, I'm fine. If we yes, get old yeah. Manny Moe's, hell yeah. What he does on the field when he's available is great. I think he would be competing with Amik. But we can't bank on it, and he needs to be pushed down to competing for. I mean, my, I would love for him to be competing for cornerback five. Yeah, uh, with Gilmore and with Davis. Um, but it, if he's cornerback four, I'll be much happier than cornerback three on opening day. If he's even one hundred percent viable, like, unless he don't earns know. his way to that cornerback three and or yeah, and it's or a two. nice to have. Or two. If he proves Brad Holmes right, yeah, and exceeds expectations, that'll be a nice have. Like. Yeah. I'm okay with adding that to our war chest of, of all these bounties and these these wonderful things that are happening in our lives all of a sudden as Lions fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I took it as, uh, and, I, and I missed the beginning of the conversation, so I apologize if you guys already said this, but as just Brad keeping his, you know, cards close to the, to, to the vest versus Dan wearing his heart on the sleeve. You know, they just, they just dress differently, you know, when they, when they wake up. One puts his pants on two legs at a time, the other one's one Who's leg who? at a time. 
Who jumps Dan definitely two layers. Dan's, sure. yeah, Dan's a two layer. Yeah, Dan's guy. fucking. Eek. Yeah. How, many, how many like holes in his crotch has Dan gotten? Just jolting oh, out of bed, yeah, sliding. Yeah, he's exactly. like, honey, Holly, yeah. I ripped my trousers again. Yeah. God, he's also got jeans that are probably as old as uh, oh, that white Betty, sure the, the car he had, the truck he had, and back when he was at A and M that he brought up to the door. It wasn't last year, but the year before at the owners meeting. Dan, for sure, that shirt that the button up you had on yeah. oh, yeah. was from tw- 2002. Oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> for yeah. damn sure. You guys have worn that thing in so long. Bro, when I, remember we, we tried going to the strip club with, I mean, let me in, by the way, too. He had Crocs on. Let yeah. me in, though. They let me in with the Crocs. Yeah. This is your birthday. But so. Dan, I saw him, uh, got to follow Holly on IG. Uh, they're doing a shirt, by the way, coming out. We'll, we'll probably talk about it, whatever. But uh, Croc guy. Dan Campbell, Croc Dan guy. Dan Campbell's Croc a Croc guy? guy? Confer- yeah. yeah, confirm me. Confer- we're, I'm able to wear my Crocs all the time. So. He wore them it. The only picture we saw was him wearing them in the house, though. So we don't know if he wears them in public, let alone the street. You know he has, he has a pair at the facility. Yeah. Oh, oh for yeah. 100%. He, he probably slides on. He doesn't get checked by security. The front oh, desk dang. person just slides him his box every yes. day. He's like, oh, yeah, thank you. Because oh, he has sure. his shit together. His concerns are his fucking shoes for the day. They're winning a Super Bowl. And yeah. I love that about him. And we do got to go to break real fast because we went over the last segment. But when we get back, we're going to be talking to Al about Josh Reynolds that situation and who's going to fill in for him. But first, let me tell you about Jack Labrador because football season is officially over, but baseball season is here. However, Jack Labrador is 24-7, 365 days a year. Learn how to play on your phone now at jacklabrador.gg. Two new symbols and a franchise changing three-point play. And remember that once you go Jack, you never go back. Go to jacklabrador.gg now and join in on the fun. smarter security solutions featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more for over 90 years we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most all with personalized service and care right now for a limited time receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system guardian alarm we protect michigan A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. Wake up, Woodward. Woodward Sports has a new morning show. Start your day with Wake Up Woodward, Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m., live on Woodward Sports. Join Kool-Aid, Flannel Sam, Broder, JB, and KG every morning as they cover all of Detroit sports. Sports talk, banter, and live fan interaction, all on Detroit's number one sports network, Woodward Sports. What up, though? Welcome back to Woodward Heavyweights, live on WoodsSports.com. Rest in peace, John Claus. I'm Yeezy Espin Rex. Rest in peace, John Young Claus. Chris, Nicholas Koloff, Al Carson, the building, the football guy. We're just kind of chatting shit, talking sports and whatnot. Um, before we got on, did you, did you catch that clip of Dan Campbell floating around? By him talking about a uh, trophies, that's that's the next step in the Detroit Lions development. There, no, I missed that flow. No, no, no. Like, let me in. He's he had actually Chris. Oh, you don't have headphones. Yeah, so he had a one on one with Tim Twenty Men, and Tim Twenty Men's like, you know, I, your that's I game. bookmarked it on my YouTube to watch. Don't yeah. worry. Okay, it's bed night. Stuff. So, so yeah, Dan was like, yeah, next step is trophies. As it, it's different for Lions fans. That's all. That's all I'm Not saying. division banners, but no. trophies. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pull up that trophy case. Absolutely. 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 Well, uh, a guy that 
Because we lost him, Easy does not think we're going to win those trophies. He's been distraught the past couple days after losing this guy. The Josh big, Reynolds. The biggest piece of this offense, Yeah, Josh yeah, the, the only piece that kept this offense going. This is why the CJ, DJ thing happened, Strong because y'all just be talking shit. Drink. I didn't say none of those words. He uh, he was very distraught when we lost the Josh The gravitational Reynolds. pull of yeah. opposing coverages, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Defensive coordinators, when they played us, couldn't they, fall they're asleep game planning for Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds, apparently, speak easy, man. What's, uh, what are your thoughts about losing? Losing Josh Reynolds I, I appreciate him. Yes. I, I think he had a massive year. He had some big catches, especially first half of the year. I feel like he really was a reliable go-to third down target. And one, another great gem for Brad Holmes. It was a, a recycled cast off of the Titans. Yeah. And, you know, reunited him with golf. And he at least brought us the, he was like our one size factor uh, outside Laporta. Yeah. And good catch radius, not the best route runner, but, I think because we have such a prolific offensive scheme yes. that he is interchangeable. Like I do not the yeah. big my biggest thing is I don't know if he was elevating this offense as opposed to being a complementary cog in this offense. Yeah. Like truly I think the offense does still revolve around the run game, play action passing, attacking middle of the field and, and, and designing plays for Amonra and Laporta and Gibbs. Um, but like it it it's interesting that he was a part of our culture, part of our locker room. It was yeah. similar to losing Jamal Williams the year prior. We're losing this guy. Like, we aren't holding on or overpaying to every single cultural fit that is an established veteran here. That's a good sign. Yeah. You're, you're not overpaying for that. But I think we can find another interchangeable part in this offense in the draft. I don't know if – so, like, free agent options. I like Kendrick Bourne. I think one thing that is like-minded with his skill set and our offense is he is an ass kicker in the run game. He'll give his all. Like mm -hmm. he is a he he was Cooper Cup's number two at Eastern Washington. Yes. So you know he had to kick ass in training camp as an undrafted free agent to make it uh, on the Niners. So I still like Kendrick Bourne. And he plays is he on still the free outside. Agent? He's still a free agent. Yeah. Okay. And then like obviously the DJ Chark reunion could make sense. He takes the top off. For cheaper, but I don't. I, those are the guys. I mean, I don't know about the Michael Thomas reunion. I don't know about. Fuck no. Maybe Russell sorry, Gage Michael coming Thomas. off his no. patellar tendon. The one guy that we could bring in to compete with Antoine Green would be a Keith Kirkwood, the guy that, you know, uh, Hawaii and then Temple, and he was with the two stints with the Saints. Mm -hmm. the Saints couldn't give up on him. So those are guys that maybe we could replace, but realistically, I think let's slide in another guy in the draft. Um, that has hopefully that big catch radius. Um, plus more. Huh? Maybe. I said plus more, but that's me being hopeful. Yeah, no, but you had but that I think rookie that's the zone, floor, right? They'll at least go get someone in the draft with size. Yeah. yeah. What or, about like the two guys they met with pre draft or pre combine? Three guys. Were Xavier Leggett and Brian Thomas Jr., who were both possibly around that 29 area. Who of those guys would you rather see? Devontae okay. Walker, too. Yeah. Taz, I don't know. Taz I don't know if that's not 29, though. No, not at 29. I think, yeah, I was going to say after his senior bowl performance, yeah. uh, he kind of dropped to possibly being available at 61. Yeah. Um, but I love Leggett. I love Thomas Jr. I think we talked about Tom, both of them last time I was on, and I wouldn't rather have one. I'd be happy with either. Um, obviously, I think Thomas provides a little more in the area of catch radius versus Leggett, you know, everyone's calling. I mean, he has some Amon Ra qualities, some Debo Samuel qualities, some Steve Smith, Heinz Ward, that tough, tough guy. I, see him yeah, as like, guy. I, I said my comp for him, if all things go well, if everything is roses and he's the best player that he could be, he's going to be like an A.J. Brown. That was my comp for Leggett. A.J. Brown, That's Debo kind of combo. Yeah. yeah. Eats over the middle, mm -hmm. absorbs contact through the catch on the safety. Yeah. Yeah. A.J. Brown makes sense, Spence. Um, I know we're talking receiver, and, I, and by the way, I'm I'm down for the rookie too, just because receivers in any system feels like they could just hop in almost every single year. I, I don't want it's crazy, and I I guess I kind of understand like we are wide receiver one receiving like these crazy contracts, but like I feel like every year there's a rookie wide receiver. You're like, damn, in his rookie yeah. year, he's Zay Flowers Puka. became wide receiver one for for uh, I mean I'm, I'm Rossi Brown for us. Like it's every year these rookies come in no matter where Jordan they're drafted. Addison was Jordan Addison was Jordan Addison same. A lot of guys is yeah. hop in is, is seamless fit. I think we can get that in a rookie. I guess writes. I was 
and and they're they're making more of the Josh Reynolds stuff than I was. I was yeah, where he was I know. distraught. I know that's okay, why I lived into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, I was just, not, I was just. Tribune, yeah, he was. Distraught. I was comfortable with him being there. <laughs> that, that's I guess what I'm saying. I want to bring it real quick to the defensive side of the ball, where I don't know. We talked about the quarterback spot. I actually forgot where I was going to ask you as a chat in the, or a comment in the Wolver Sports chat too. Easy, real quick. Nice defensive end. What's up? While you think of that. My bad. Oh, was just going to say, Al, does it scare you at all? Easy brought up a great point the other day that Xavier Leggett did not produce in college until his fifth season. He never put up more than 167 yards before his fifth year. It's a good question. Fifth year too. I think there are certain positions where that one-year outlier um, is a question mark. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the ecosystem of that South Carolina offense that he was in, it's not like it was the best scheme. It's not like it was the best line. It was Rat. I mean, Rattler. Yeah, solid quarterback. He had a solid quarterback that was going above and beyond, despite some of That's the um, elementary elements of the offense, predictable elements of the offense. But also, just you know, go watch any Spencer Rattler highlight. Yeah. And half the throws are him being Ryan Tannehill standing in the pocket till the very last minute mm -hmm. and getting a strike to Xavier Leggett. Uh, it's a good question. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to marinate that. On that a one does make me a little bit concerned too. Shout out to yeah. Gun Guy. Take your pants off. Chris is an offense question. I, yes. I remember my defense one. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just quick, just quickly. The, a name I haven't heard us mention yet is a rookie or a receiver we drafted last year, Antoine Green. Like, yeah. what? A, what is anybody's chances around this room, Al? What do you think of him potentially stepping up, or are you are you looking to address? The I wouldn't be draft? surprised. I think it's personally. more likely that DPJ steps up than Antoine Green. I, I, Antoine Green. I don't. I don't know. I'd s six two, two hundred pounds. Yeah, he, but we barely know. saw anything. Though I feel so. like DPJ is more of an option than he is for that yeah. wide receiver That's three spot. So, I think DPJ will get. Right now, if we go into it, if we go into the first, you know, before training camp, whatever the mandatory work workouts are in May, DPJ is getting uh, the X snaps. He's mm -hmm. going to be out there in eleven personnel. Yeah, I, it'll. I think. Honestly, when we go 12 personnel, when we go two wide receiver, we'll see more Jamison and Amonra. Yeah. Or some of the two where uh, Sam Laporta is playing some of the X role like we did. Like, that's why our offense is more interchangeable, I think, than a lot of offenses that are more stagnant. Yeah. Um, but I, I like Antoine Green, his possible upside. I think he definitely could make this roster. I think we're sleeping on Cleef Raymond a little bit. I know he's undersized, but mm – -hmm. I still think there's a reason he's stuck around and had impact plays for us. But I'm intrigued by Antoine Green. I think Brad Holmes has a proclivity for finding gems in the draft at wide receiver, dating back to the Cooper Cups of the friggin' world, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but also Monroe St. Brown. So I I'm clearly intrigued for Antoine Green. Yeah, I guess the, the one thing, too, to kind of, and even for myself, is maybe it's a little bit of closure for me for the Josh Reynolds stuff. But, like, at times we've missed Monroe St. Brown, who is uh, – above and beyond our, our wide receiver one, or these guys do most production for us. And we still produce in those games and won those games outside of the Patriots one last year for the Patriots, Bill Belichick. He kind of has Jared Goff's number. I'm not going to weigh too much into that one, but I know that Amon Ra missed, I think it was the Panthers game this year. I don't know if you guys remember or not. Either way, I know when we missed them, as disrespectful as it sounds, I almost didn't notice. So maybe the Josh Reynolds stuff will, will smooth over a lot easier than. He thinks Josh Reynolds is better than Amon Ross St. Brown. Not saying that at all. Fool this man. I did, however, remember my defensive question, but we are kind of coming up against a break. Maybe we'll reset with it. Um, we'll go break a little bit early. Well, Hassan Reddick officially traded to the New York Jets third, from the Philadelphia Eagles. Additional third round pick. A guy that was mocked to come to the Detroit Lions. I want to get Al's take on that, but not before Spinny tells about Big Boy. Big Boy. Seafood Fest is back at Big Boy. Catch it while you can. Dive into their fish and chips, their new Parmesan crusted cod, perfectly fried cram strip pad, clam strip <laughs> platter, <laughs> huh? wow, or delicious fish sandwich. A Big Boy must try the new mango iced tea, the ultimate compliment to their popcorn shrimp, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Every day is a fish fry, Big Boy. And remember, today's the last day. You can get there now for the all-you-can-eat seafood buffet on Friday nights. Make sure you go check out Seafood Fest at Big Boy. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. 
We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts, Woodward Sports. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod. Perfectly fried clam shrimp platter or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango iced tea, the ultimate compliment to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. Give your pet the best. Premier Pet Supplies, hands down Michigan's best pet store. Same prices at all the conveniences of the online and big box retailers. With one major difference, they're family and locally owned and operated for 30 plus years. Over 60 brands of food with nutrition experts to help you. Same day, local curbside home delivery. Premier Pet Supply, give your pet the best. www.premierpetsupply.com. Uh, welcome back to World Heavyweight Live on WordSports.com. We're easy. Recipes, John Claus. The guy, R.I.P. John Claus, uh, Christopher Columbus. <laughs> no man, that's Nicholas Cole, Al Carson, Christopher, yeah, Christopher, Christopher Watts. Christopher Wallace, come on, join the show. Um, goddamn, I'm good because it, it, it was that? it was the Panthers game that I'm Ross A. Brown missed. It it was so seamless that none of us remembered it, but it happened. And who was the guy that stepped up? You looked it up, Al. Reynolds had five for seventy six, four of them for first downs, touchdown. Laporte also stepped up. Yes. Against the Panthers. One trick play, though. Yeah. Against the Panthers. Yeah. Oh, shit. In, in, a, Panthers, in a fuck you game, fair. a revenge game, if you from the previous Very true year. Too. There was a oh, fact. Oh, shit. There. Josh Reynolds went off against the worst team in the NFL. He's a godsend. And they, He's better JC, than Amon Ross. JC Horn Brown. was out, right? Uh, he had got hurt the week before, I believe. I don't, I don't remember, to be honest with you. Because JC Horn would have been the guy that. That doesn't help up. my narrative, Al. Shut up. Nah. I was kidding. Josh Reynolds, <laughs> good riddance, buddy. Wait, what I did want to say quickly about Josh Reynolds is how I almost, if I'm him, I take a little less money with the Lions. Yeah. If I'm thinking about the long-term outlook of my career success, I get I get getting a bag, I get grabbing your fourth contract, but he also saw how a bad fit in a questionable uh, environment, offense, didn't work in Tennessee. That's why he wound up here. And then we signed him for two over six million or whatever it was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's joining a, a Broncos offense with Jarrett Sidham and Ben DiNucci. I mean, shouts Ben DiNucci and his hat company. Shout out Ben DiNucci. Uh, the Nooch. And then the Nooch. he's learning a new offense. Yes, I get there's some similarities between Sean Payton's system and some of the influence of Dan Campbell from there. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, but the biggest thing for me is the duplicity of some of the roles of the wide receiver. Because I, I already thought there was a logjam of defined roles with Tim Patrick, Portland Sutton, yeah. 6'4" sideline mavens lengthy guys yeah. that that well, are going to win on contested catches and over the middle can i say this who Dude. departed another guy of the same stature judy Stop. but like it, it marvin Judy's Mims, a judy. slot guy though yeah it's, he, but still six i mean but reynolds could play z play slot yeah and i'll say yeah, this he's too. who knows if tim patrick's gonna play more than two games a season sure. like i love tim patrick yeah when he's healthy but the dude can't stay healthy Dude, shout out to Tim Patrick for saving multiple of my fantasy seasons. Yeah. Because I bought in a second year. I mean, he got hurt. but I feel bad for his injury luck. He earned that contract. He's a skilled Absolutely. player. I feel bad for him. He but was then, a red zone Because all the hype was around Sutton and, and, and um, Sutton and Judy. And yeah. Patrick's yeah. like, nah, I got it. Red this. zone monster, Tim Patrick. Just beast all around. Yeah. That was Love like him. when everyone was drafting Robert Woods and yeah. uh, Brandon Cooks. And then I was sitting there and not I'm me. like, who's this Cooper Cup guy? You yeah. know, I decided <laughs> on him. But. Uh, Marvin Mims will win on those seam balls Ooh, over the nice middle too, for actually. him. Mm -hmm. He's going to be, um, holy smokes, I'm forgetting the lead being wide receiver in the early uh, Drew Brees Saints era. Um, yeah, Marquise Colson yeah. didn't make nice. a Pro Bowl. He's going to play that role down the seam. That's what Marvin Mims is good at. So maybe it opens up some of the, the crossers and stuff for Josh Reynolds yeah. to run. Yeah. But we're talking about all these question marks with that role. 
If he had re-signed here, would we have any and question marks? No. Just he might lose some snaps First of all, to, to, to Jameson. Or to Jay, and, and everybody knows how we feel about Jared Goff. Our stance on Jared Goff, it's not – we're not gawkers, as some people are. We've been called haters at times. I, I kind of, you know, I, I lightened my mood on Jared Goff the last season based on what he did and winning playoff games and stuff like that. But Jared Goff made Josh Reynolds. That is, like, people say that about Amon Ross St. Brown, which is ridiculous, or other players in this offense. But he literally made Josh Reynolds. He made him in L.A., and then when he left and uh, Josh Reynolds went to Tennessee, he got cut on a Tennessee team that desperately needed wide receivers. So if I'm with you. If I'm Josh Reynolds, I'm re-signing in a place where I know I'm wanted, I know I'm needed, I have chemistry with the quarterback, and I'm going to have great snaps. Well, well can I say, yeah. I love Brad, first and foremost. Cheap as fuck. Yeah, he's not paying him seven million. Cheap as fuck. I when love I, when I heard guy. him in that presser say, we weren't sure if we acquired the $14 million cap hit of Carlton Davis. What do you mean, brother? You're the seventh most cat, the seventh most cash base in the league. Yeah. What do you mean you can't acquire seven, 14 in cap? That blew my mind. Whatever. Moving on. He had to get his bag, bro. He's been in the league. How, how old is Josh Reynolds? 28? 29? 29 now. Yeah. 29? Turning 29. 29. But I'd get like your, to get see your the bag and let me finish, though, because who's Dan Campbell a disciple of? Sean Payton. Bill yeah. Parcells. Bill Parcells. Bill Parcells. Yeah. But Sean Payton initially, as like uh, with the coaching staff, yeah. whatever. I guess Miami for a short stint there, too. But, like, I feel like Payton's going to find a way to make him work. I've, uh, I've gone as far as out to say I think he'll be more productive than Judy was. But well, I probably might have been wrong about that because it's been brought up the Judy numbers. Judy's, was, Judy's better. Yeah, Judy is combo, a, better. objectively better receiver than Josh Reynolds. Better They're upside. different. I'll, I'll say that. Just, yeah. They're different. But I, I do need to call out. You saying that Goff made Josh Reynolds. Oh. I need to give Josh Reynolds credit for when he first signed him for being a catalyst of comfortability. Yeah. Yes. Okay, because we and were kind of Marie We, we were a lost ship at sea yeah, with the, trying yes. to work this offense. And Brandon he Powell. helped. Just, Tyrell Williams and, and Tyrell Williams, Rashad Perriman. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad for sure. No, he de- the, I mean, he definitely played a role on. He played that role by far the worst offense we've seen the, the Lions we'll have in the past see. couple How about years. That? But yeah, it's what has he done without Jared Goff? That's all I'm saying. But yeah, get your money, get your bag, do your thing, go play for the bum ass Broncos who are going to be fourth in their division this year. But I just want to know a new news that came out. This breaking news today, actually. Be- oh, go ahead. That Brock Wright, another offensive weapon was offered a sheet from the 49ers. Kyle Shanahan coming in here, Here's trying, to, sheet. trying to poach some of our players. Brock Wright, you know, he's, he might. He already stole a tight end play, by the way. He did. He stole a tight end play that we ran. Brock Allegedly. Wright already, we know he's slow as dirt, like when he gets the ball in his ends, but he nice. makes Whoa. good plays. He's slow as dirt. Like oh, go watch that game winning touchdown. Go watch that. Go watch that game winning touchdown. Turn down the Jets against Bro's the Jets. Running down the sidelines like this. Brock, the oh, dare Brock. You. I like Brock Wright. I think he fits this offense well. He knows this offense well. A, com- a complicated offense for tight ends. For sure. Do you see Bargain Bin Brad matching that offer sheet from the 49ers? Or is now Brock we're calling Hall? him Bargain Bin Brad because he has depth of foresight for the next three to five years? Yeah. Yes, he's what Bargain Bin Brad. I'd rather have frugality. The, the Jets just got Hassan Reddick. He's I, Bargain Bin Brad. But they no, re- I think we match. Didn't they, they resign on- uh, Zilstra? Oh. We re-signed Zilstra. Yeah, but that's Sorry, like, no, a good offer sheet. Zilstra. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's we nothing. gave him the original tender, and maybe in hindsight we should have done a little more, yeah. and maybe we're going to end up paying him a little more. I think we match. I, For me, I know we're talking about bargain bins and, and, and Big Al's toy bin over here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I think even if they go up to like five, five and a half million per year, I think we match. He, he is a no. fit. I don't think that's a big overpay. The fact that the Niners want to integrate him, which is a very complicated system for yes, tight ends, similar yes. to us, they ask a lot of different things. Yep. If they see that, then why the hell wouldn't we? We're like, oh, yeah, no, he is valuable. You're right. Stay away. We don't want to make you better. Also, yeah. the goddamn Niners, like our new rivals right now, they're, they're one I of the know. teams I'm like, you, I know. it had to be you guys, huh? They're coming down, though, because no, the- Trent's getting older. They're going to have to pay Brock. Yeah. I, we're going to even they're out. Not pay, or, or, there's or, or, or no chance in hell they pay Brock. Brady. And they lost, oh, they lost a uh, tight end. Their backup. There is no chance other, in hell they, pl- they pay Brock. The top they're, they're if they, if, I don't know. If, if Kyle Shanahan walks up to John Lynch and says, we got to pay Brock Purdy, and John Lynch says, I got that dude with the last pick of the draft. Suck my dick. Well, it'd be, like, it'd be, no it'd be the other way around. It'd be Kyle Shanahan being like, 
Did you see Jim Grapple? I took the Super Bowl. No. You see if, this guy I took the Super Bowl? If exactly. Anybody won, Fuck you wanting to pay this guy. Yeah. Give me any guy. I'm going to make it work. No, I made Matt not, Ryan a fucking MVP. They're not paying Brock Purdy. I'll they're paying him. They they're paying him. Guys, there's no... Ba- what are we talking about the back and forth of Shanahan and Lynch? Yeah. Shanahan brought Lynch in from a TV gig. Exactly. Because his dad knew him. That's Shanahan's what I'm saying. the it's one Shanahan that also called Purdy. That's what I'm saying. Shanahan's calling most of the shots. Lynch is... is really? A very, he's... Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah. Of all the all of the front offices. What do you mean? I just I don't want to disrespect John Lynch like that. I That's think not he's... disrespecting him. He's had they've gone to two Super Bowls. Like yeah. it takes a lot of very valuable parts to have a successful team, and that's why their front office and their coaching staff have been stripped to the boards the last five years. I mean, Adam Peters just took the job in Washington. Ron Carthens in Tennessee. Yeah. They lose yeah. their defensive coordinator not, every single year. Yeah, I'm not yeah. exactly. I'm not. And I mean, the guys I just named are now general managers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not discrediting Lynch, but I'm just saying. Shanahan hand selected him for a reason. Yeah. And he does get a lot more say than most head coaches, and and that's part of the working um, relationship they have. Yeah. So um, you're matching the sheet, bringing him back. Oh, rocket I, ship. I'm the same way. The rocket ship is rocket lifting ship off. Rocket, rocket, rocket ship. Yeah, rocket he is ship. lifting off in Detroit it. next year. Yeah, By the way, not, we have more cap space than two. So there's no excuse not to. No, really, there's not. I mean, I guess I got the Brock. It's also not a very uh, good tight end class, and we just invested some draft resources in tight end. Let's yeah. bring the gang yeah. back together. And we lost Brock is Detroit up. Lions legend Zach Ertz already. So yeah, can you if he if he Brock earns Ertz? up to that five million <laughs> yeah. and is like one of the like the thirty ninth compensatory equation factor, that would be so what? funny. <laughs> what? I just would like re-signing Brock to five and a half million. Well, we is all the number? That's, that's too much. No, that was no, a that was ball, yeah, that's a ballpark. That is a ballpark statement. That is a football guy, oh, yeah. Al. Ballpark. Yeah. Ballpark. Okay. That's too much. If you're, pay, yeah, if you're Al, paying, you're paying. I'm not. Know. I'm not, I'm paying, not tripping. I'm not we're not paying over Josh over seven. I'm not paying. I'm not paying Brock, Brock over four million. I'm just saying they didn't ask him to match for more than one million, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he went to five million instead of two point nine. I'm not paying him more than four. Because. I like James Mitchell. It's probably at four. I like James. I like James Mitchell because he's coming off a late season injury. But yeah. is, is James Mitchell the blocker that Brock is? No, no probably not. And he's not the same awareness and IQ yet. But they also. <sighs> and when Brock's in, just because of the natural thought that he is the blocker, that you're different, like different schematics, different thought process versus when when Mitchell's in there, you're thinking he's catching the ball. I also yeah. do at some point in our lives want to talk about the new kickoff rule. But Ooh, one quick oh. blurb from that, from the rule from the changes of roster construction, there are going to be more teams that carry five tight ends on the roster because of that kick return blocking, yeah. what they need. Linebacker. So we're oh, going yeah. to need yeah. to utilize. We can get into it at, at another we will. So, we will. so are you saying a player of Malcolm Rodriguez's variety is more valuable than ever for teams? I would say hey, so. Hey, eat shit, flannel. <laughs> oh, he shit on Malcolm Rodriguez. Oh, yeah, you shit. We got tons. Because when I get – Put Malcolm in tight end. You want to go early, come back? You want because I want to talk about Hassan Reddick. He blocked the shit out of people. You want to talk about what? Hassan Reddick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't even get to Hassan yeah, Reddick. Yeah, how did we get here? We didn't. I, well, we're all. <laughs> let's go to break. We're not going to touch yeah. on it. Look at this guy. We got to bring him in as a third or something. Shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> let me tell you. You want to do a read? You want to do the Guardian read? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, crush a read. Let first. me tell you about Guardian Alarm. Guardian Alarm offers you customized solutions from real experts. Their professional technicians take the time to recommend security and automation solutions specific to your needs. They also have 24 7 professional monitoring. You can call them anytime, day or night. No Guardian Alarm team member will stay on the phone as long as needed. And of course, they have technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves technology. It's been proven to work. And people who have been proven to care so call them at 1-800 stay out that's 1-800 stay out and let them know woodward sports sent you toy quarterback challenge presented by shake shack make sure you sign up now if you can throw it on a rope you can win two tickets To this year's home opener, all you got to do is scan that QR code right there, go into any Shake Shack location, or go to woodwardsports.com, and you can sign up. If you can throw it on a rope, you could be at the home opener. And it's not one of these contests where sign up, and then maybe we'll text you to maybe come do it. No, if you sign up, you're in the competition. It's the Shake Shack QB Challenge. Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. 
Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss. With Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. When I lost it. Spencer, you guys, make sure you save the date. All 12 locations are hosting the event. <laughs> what date? You guessed it, 420. Make sure you pull up. Again, all 12 locations hosting the event. Last time, Spencer had such a good time. He crashed his car. I, but don't crash I your got car. rear-ended. He did get rear-ended. However, it was and a, a great and time. A, and a red light, too. Free food. Free products. It's a great time. This was Spencer. All 12 locations hosting an event on 420. Save the date. Google the machine. Or hit the Google machine. Find the one nearest you. This was Spencer, your local canvas plug. What up, though? Welcome back to the World Heavyweights Live on Sports.com. I'm way easy. Join my guy, Spimo Rex. What up, though? R.I.P. John Chris. Kloss. R.I.P. Chris B. John Kloss, Nicholas Koloff. R.I.P. Al Carson, the football guy, joining the show. Appreciate you helping us, bro. We need you today, bro. So th- thank you for coming through, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I know you want to speak about a specific thing, the kickoff return. But this is kind of breaking news. It's, it's kind of floating around the chat there. Uh, Hassan Reddick, once upon a time, rumored to land with the Detroit Lions. We didn't think it was going to happen. A little bit out of uh, bargain bin Brad's price range. However, he landed with the, the Jets. Uh, what is your reaction to the Detroit Lions fumble uh, acquiring an elite pass rusher? Oh, I'm not going to classify it as a fumble. I think we showed with our acquisition of Carlton Davis and a lot of other moves. I don't think Reese, because he's going to want to be re-signed. I believe he's on the last year of his deal. So, like, he, they're going to tack on another year to that. I, I like Hassan Reddick, the player. I don't know if he's the strongest run defender so i don't know if we would have rationalized acquiring a player who's not the strongest run defender mm-hmm. at edge i just don't see that i mean that's why they got heavy-handed marcus davenport i a big dude I, I saw the i saw the news and i didn't equate it to anything lions related it, uh, i just thought obviously the jets are in one of the biggest win now modes and they'd like to have three pass rushers you know they lost Bryce Huff and a little swap here with the Eagles. And mm-hmm. so that he's going to be a, a veteran leader for um, their last two first round picks. Will McDonald, yeah. fifth, yep. fourth. Iowa and then Jermaine State, Johnson, right? the third. I just got from you. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's Iowa State. And uh, do you think that they would have even given him up to an NFC contender like the Lions for a conditional third? Or because that that's what it was for me. I don't think the Eagles would have been like, yeah, here you go. Thanks for DeAndre Swift, Lions. Here's Hassan Reddick for a conditional third round pick that you'll get back if he doesn't resign. That's that's a good point. That yeah. might have been a one element of the crazy thought thinking from uh, Howie Roseman. Yeah. Do you think they they like kind of fumbled the bag there a little bit though since they signed Bryce Huff and like why not just make the trade at that point? I mean like you could have traded Bryce Huff. He was not under contract though. But, I mean, franchise – I'm sorry, not the Jets. I guess, yeah, the Jets could have No, the Jets you could have yeah. franchised. The Jets, yeah, they could have just swapped, swapped there. Them. I mean, essentially what they did, right? It's essentially what they did, but the Jets – It's a conditional I, third. It's, they it'll turn, a, a it'll will turn into a second. over 67% Unless he gets hurt. Yeah, I think yeah. he'll still – Will McDonald wasn't ready. He, he's no. a year three guy. He'll provide he's some – He's also a little betweener, too. Right? Yeah, but he's he, – he was able to play as a – no, he's not as much of a tweener. He was a five technique because of Iowa State's hybrid defense. Okay. I, I think he can live on the edge a little bit more. He's a little yeah. thinner. I mean, he was, a, he was a track and basketball star. He was like 225 when he got to Iowa State, and they played him as a defensive end as a freshman, not because he could live on, inside, 
but because he was by far the biggest freak on the team. This is mm-hmm. why I love Al. Like, who else knows random shit like that? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Al. Draft nuggets for Will. No, I don't. Because now, and I, I realize the Jets have signed some players, but they might get part of their compensatory formula is allowing Bryce Huff to sign away um, uh, to the Eagles, and now they at least point. guarantee, uh, and then the Eagles guarantee a conditional pick. Yeah, because I, well, I have a question about that, too, because didn't we lose a compensatory pick because of the acquisition of Carlton Davis, even though it was via trade? No, he wasn't a factor in it. Our four guys that have counted towards the oh, equation. Oh, I forgot. I forgot about Davenport. Yeah, yeah. Our dad, Davenport I, I, was the, in my head. The guy's not even playing, so I'm like, what? but he was the fourth. I didn't know if he'd be make the the formula or not. Yeah, Amik, Davenport, DJ equals out, and and Zeitler. Zeitler um, too. Yeah, I'll, I'll outweigh Jackson. Yeah. Chunks, Zeitler was Johnson. late, so it, it was equal before, even before we got Zeitler. I'm pretty sure because we had only lost. Wasn't Zeitler on the end of his contract? No, I'm saying when we acquired Zeitler, but it was like in the back half. Like it was already, we already weren't getting a compensatory take before Zeitler signing. Oh, I thought that's what helped cancel out the possibility. I don't know. They, they're complicated. It we is don't, we don't very truly know. Nick, Nick Colty on, on Twitter is the best with it, obviously. Yeah. But we won't know because a portion of the equation is not just the contract, the value of the contract, but it's also playing time. Yeah. So we won't find Production. out. I mean, he'll, he'll have his projections that'll be extremely accurate. I mean, he, he also made the NFL. Correct the pick that went to this Niners because he called out the NFL and the NFL had to be like, oh, yeah, never mind. The Niners get the 99th pick, not the 102 or whatever. That's crazy. Yeah, he's he like specializes in compensatory formula. Yeah, I think I, I just followed him like a he's month ago. He's only got ago. like 20,000 followers, but he's I, I, right. That's why right? I was saying, too. And then the crazy part, I try to get him on the show. He don't respond to messages either. He's oh. snooty. What? <laughs> I would love a conversation with him, man. Me he's, too, man. Yeah. He is a huge comp pick nerd. I just found him out uh, a month ago. And it, it's when I found him out, it was like when I found out we didn't have any compensatory picks. And I was like, who's this guy? And I was like, oh, this guy knows his shit. He he's knows. been doing it for a while. Um, you came on today with a mission. Or, or one of the things you really want to talk about was the kickoff change. Um, what was your take on that? Happy, excited? Oh, so excited because what was the number? There's like... Less than 30% of kickoffs have been returned now last year. Yeah. Like, it's been a non-factor where it's made it so, really, the core special teamers are just the people that excel as gunners on punt team and punt return. Um, But I think it's a no-brainer, but I still didn't know if the NFL was going to, you know, hike up their pants, uh, put on their big boy britches, and and make a real change, uh, which is some risk to it. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of thoughts on the kick return. One, Shouts to uh, developmental leagues everywhere that are you know, very yeah. important to adding depth the last three, four years. Shout out Matthew Betts. In the NFL. Yeah. And, and, but also for them thinking outside the box, yeah, yeah. Sam Schwartzman uh, was the head of uh, XFL uh, rule development. He's a former uh, highest rated interior offensive lineman. In uh, NCAA football, like 2011. How do you know this like, shit? <laughs> Sam Schwartzman, what the he's fuck really wrong good. With you? Guys, you, you probably were, you know, playing with your friend in, in NCAA football 2011 using Andrew Locke. They were a fun team to have. And, and he was their center who was like a 96. <laughs> Fuck no. Sam Schwartzman, Wild. really smart guy, helped implement this with a number of the special teams coordinators of the XFL and Eric Galco, who's now the player development guy of the Shrine Bowl. These guys did. <laughs> yeah, bro. What's so funny? Nobody else knows these things. There's four of you that exist. We, we got to get you a contract or something. Let Let this, this is going to lead to more returns, more incentives on the kick return team, and, and changes to roster construction and scheme. So my first thought with this change is I think Dave Phipp, which it's still a very underrated coup that we got him from the Eagles. Yeah, we got Hank Fraley, but we got Dave Phipp. And him and Dan Campbell are already watching film about it, and they're excited. Like, Bro, they were talking about before the vote even had. I remember last year, because it was before the season ended. And I apologize for cutting you off. I just Let's talk. It was, it was Dave Phipp and, like, 12 other coordinators, special team coordinators, because, like, their job was somewhat at risk. Right? With, like, the elimination of a kickoff, it became just a ceremonial thing at that point. It was, like, 12 other coordinators that kind of came up with, like, hey, why don't we f- fucking do this? Like, what are we doing? Because their job's at risk. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I've said it before, and I'm feeling good, so I'm just going to say it again. Dave Phipps, one of the best special team coordinators in the entire league. You said the best. The best. 
I, okay, I, I'm fine with saying that too. He is the best special team coordinator. Who's better? You would know. You hey, we don't have to get into my. Yeah. Next week we can do my uh, special teams coordinator power rankings. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I got a top ten, yeah, though. Have, <laughs> but I don't want to deviate from. <laughs> Wait, who's better? Come on. Uh, the uh, Dave Tobe, Kansas City's guy. Dave Tobe. He literally has had head coaching interviews. Who out in the chat yeah, right now? Dude. Dude. Um, uh, but, well, one of the best. How about that? Is that fair? Yeah, no, no, no that's fine. I, that's why I'm saying I think Is there are going to be there are going to be like maybe six to ten teams that do a better job preparation schematically of yeah. taking advantage of this new rule that it'll be further advantage and it'll make the importance of the third phase of football more important. The biggest change is there's less, obviously less collisions, yes. less, less concussion stuff. Yeah. But it's not all about explosive plays. It's more so about um, read and reaction for the return person. But also the setup mm -hmm. is more like a, like a uh, space. You can run plays off of it. Yeah, it's like a spaced out yeah. running play because yeah. you can have up to um, nine players on the 35-yard line. But two of the nine players can be as far back as the 30-yard line, but you can have guys gravitating around five yards behind the other person okay. to set up legitimate pin and pulls, power plays. Huh. So my manifestation is, what if Ben Johnson, one of the greatest um, geometry field of, of play, geometry scheme guys yeah. in the NFL, what if he's also helping out with Dan Campbell and they're kind of talking through ways to open up alleys and spaces for our return man. And we don't know who our return man is going to be now. Yeah. I know a lot of people immediately thought of j -Mo, It's not going to be that's j almost, right? It's not going to be Gibbs. I don't think so, but I don't know. Bro, One I, thought I'm I had out. was, why not throw Jameer Gibbs back there a little no. bit? That's, that's what I said. Yeah, and and like, everyone kept telling me j -Mo. I'm like, it, no, give me Jameer. If you're, but there's two return guys. You get both those If you're an opposing team and you see Jamison Williams or Jameer Gibbs back there, you're just kicking it through the uprights. And then you're giving us the ball at the 35. This rule further incentivizes yeah, teams I, I, I would. to kick within that landing zone of the 20 to 0 yard line. Mm -hmm. It's important. If you it is, it so you're saying special teams are extremely important going into next year? Yes. yes. Eat shit, flannel. <laughs> <laughs> well, what flannel say? Well, he said special teams don't matter. Uh, it, it makes it more important. Brothers today. All right. I, I I told him about the uh, the Chargers team that was first in offense and Oops. first in defense, last in special teams, but last in special teams and missed the playoffs. What is that under uh, the last year, Marty? Yeah, shot, or the second to last year under Marty Schottenheimer? Yep. They went they, thirteen and three. They lost literally the had the card. number one offense in the NFL, number one defense in the NFL, and we, missed we, the we playoffs. Uh, two thousand. 2009? 2000. I was back when special teams like was a thing too. Al, Shot. I gotta say, I brought up a point the other day about this. Please, you look mighty good today. <laughs> Jameer Gibbs and JMO, I could see back okay. there, hey. but strictly for some of the biggest games of the season, like when we play San Fran or in Dallas, I don't know if they would do that the whole entire season for the sake of them getting hurt. But as soon as playoff time comes, I could for sure see them implementing that. Could you see them do something similar? Yeah, I. Yeah, I think once in a while you got to take off that hat and let that majestic mustache shine under that light. <laughs> First off, two, perfect point, Nick. I do think in critical situations we could have our best playmakers, our best guys at making plays, reading, reacting, kind of like the Gibbs or or the Williams. It's, a, it's an excellent point. Is we can be, uh, we can choose, pick and choose our opportunities. Exactly. I love that. That's, yeah. a, that's that's not an element I had really thought through. I thought I had thought through everything. But um, the, and the other aspect is, as opposed to having um, like the gunners, the corners, um, be the primary special teams guys since kickoff had been not as important, yeah. it's just the punt return guys, teams are going to now carry upwards of five tight ends who are better at blocking those yeah. pin and pull or zone, zone play returns on kick return. Yep. Um, that would be so cool. Or power. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Perfect like, for tight ends, yeah. Um, uh, the San... San Antonio Brahmas, um, that Fred Brown took the one lap back mm -hmm. last year for the XFL. Yeah, it was a, it was trap a power play. play. Yeah, they had two. It was a trap play. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have more, maybe teams carrying five tight ends as opposed to three to four, teams carrying upwards of seven to eight linebackers because they have to block shed yep. those fullbacks and tight ends and more of the bigger safety type, which again, yeah. I think we're, we're gonna sign more safeties. It's inevitable. Yeah. Um, because of this alone. I like it. We do got to go to break, but we'll be back with more. Do you want to talk Tigers? I know whoa, you're a football whoa. guy. Oh, whoa, come on.
but we might have to talk to you. Let me tell we'll you see where it goes. about Les Stanford. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. That is exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC, the same great service that customers have come to know and trust. I'm Wilbur Avenue, just south of Nine Mile. Check out Les Stanford in Dearborn today and find the brand you want at lesstanford.com. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Best day of the year is almost here, and of course, that is opening day downtown. Make sure you come join us. At the Grand Slam Festival, Friday, April 5th at 9 a.m. You can get your tickets at GrandSlamDetroit.com. It's going to be in the Detroit Opera House parking lot, and it's always a blast. We're going to be broadcasting live and partying all day. Make sure you come check out the Grand Slam Fest, Friday, April 5th at 9 a.m. Rest in peace, John Claus. Welcome right, back to the Weights. I'm Easy S. from Morax, Young Chris, Nicholas Koloff, Al Carson, the football guy, joining us. The football guy. Did I mention that he was a football guy? Are we talking football? So, how about the Tigers? Tigers huh? No, no, no. <laughs> Come on, the, 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 who, are, who would you pick? Coach Al, special teams coordinate assistant on the Detroit Lions. I was about your, to say, you're firing Dave Fipp? No, because he's the best. I think Nick made the best observation of I would pick and choose when to put Jameer Gibbs and Jameson Williams in. And then uh, it's Khalif and it's Mo Alexander. And that might help justify Mo Alexander making the Make team because he has experience. Points. Dude, he's, yeah. yeah. He's a long strider, but like he does have a lot of experience in the developmental league reading those returns. That's actually a great point. He actually has experience. So it'd be, be one of those two. Or Craig Reynolds could get a little bit of run. If we're running some of those um, offensive plays, those uh, run play designs. Or DPJ. I mean. Yeah, G- yeah D- DPJ is another one that could. But, like, again, he's more of, like, the old old school. Yeah. yeah I know. Explosive Same player. guy, yeah. long strider. Like, even the Maurice thing made me nervous until you brought up the fact that he did do it in the XFL. Like, he had the That's why I said, yeah, it. I didn't yeah. mean to. Just because, like, the same thing with Jamo, too. Like, they're fast and they're quick, but it's more in space. Where, like, you have limited space with Jameer. It's calculated make decisions miss. in a split second. Exactly. All right, oh, so Jamie now let's talk the about the Houston the, uh, Rockets. He did a juke against the freaking um, Broncos. So I'll give him that. Yeah. You brought a sheet full of things. All right. And you know a sheet, ton of things. <laughs> there you go. So, so get it off your chest. What, what, what else you got in that piece of paper there? You've All right. Dan Campbell's baseball. blood type. <laughs> you're getting that. You're getting That's that O positive. He's rare. <laughs> yeah. I'm O positive too. Is he really O positive? No, you're H- oh, I don't know his blood type. I'm I'm not, I, 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 report. Come on, I buddy. mean, no, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm can't no. know if you don't get tested. <laughs> I have, He's like, oh, no way. <laughs> I have seven <laughs> things I think we know, we definitely don't know, or we think we know about Brad Holmes' draft philosophy and uh, position prioritization. Okay. I want it. I want it. Enough, I want it. Right? There yeah. was. All right. Pause. I think number one is he is always going to do in the draft best player of it. Like we can talk the next month yeah. about what we think he's going to do, and he's not going to do a single yeah. thing because our Maybe boards are lucky. different than his. Yeah. Let him cook. Uh, so he's he's a best player available guy. Like legitimately, we know he could do just about anything at twenty nine or sixty one. He could trade back. He could trade up. Um, he is always looking for that blue chip. For some odd reason, he is just really lowers the importance of filling potential holes because if if you take enough blue chip guys 
and, and they're guys that holes. they're going to fit in the yeah. culture. You already they're check the box of are they football guys. Mm -hmm. You'll have less holes, and you can figure out those holes in free agency. So right now, and and the big thing is then how do we how do we weigh out the position tiers? What what does he really prioritize? Because the majority of teams besides the you know Patriots with Bill Belichick back in the day, and they'd have seventy guys on one list. Mm. Everyone has a draft board that is vertical by position, but also horizontal by tiers of position by position, right? It's who is closest, where are you putting those anchors of how you prioritize positions? What are well, two, yeah. What if it's pound for pound, just player? Like, you think there's a possibility? Because like we, we did, like the Jameer Gibb kind of. Yeah, that's why they do it horizontally as well, mm -hmm. is like, his, yes. As good as he is outweighs the positional value. Exactly. Like he's so much better of a wide receiver yeah. than this guy is a left tackle. But the that positional you're grading is part of their draft grade. Yeah, Jameer Gibbs is a good example that, like, because positional he was wise, anchored higher yeah. Yeah. than a majority of the players. Mm -hmm. Even though those positions may have been they, uh, valued uh, higher. Yeah, yeah, because I think he checked the box, and this is one of the things I wanted to get to is um, playmaker, uh, explosive oh, playmaker, game that. changer. It, well, he's not just a running back. Mm -hmm. um, so the two things I think besides best player available and blueprint we know are offensive line. He values offensive line. Sewell is the backbone of this franchise. That mm -hmm. was our first statement pick. And him and obviously keeping Decker and Ragnow and, yep. and, and re-signing Glasgow and, and Zeitler and Colby Swordsdale. Those guys, like, we clearly love to win in the trenches on the offense. So I could see us going at 29 or 61, adding to offense. I think we could really value offensive line. We also value defensive line, guys. We value the trenches, I think, most. He's drafted, I think he's there's, drafted there's a any, lot of defensive You value, you value the heavyweights. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's part of this podcast, too. Um, I think there's, there's two, two positions, it's the trenches, that we know for sure will be prioritized because we don't. There's a lot of other things that we're going to talk about that we don't know he weighs, but it's defensive line, obviously Hutch. But realistically, that first draft, go back to it, and it's Levi Unzurike, mm -hmm. and then Ali McNeil, McNeil. And then he came back right after Hutch with Josh Pascoe. Yep. Yep. Guys, he gives a damn about defensive line. And he's not scared to double up like that. Exactly. We've seen, we've it, seen him double up on positions a lot. Exact same positions. Yeah. Because he likes it so much. Mm -hmm. He does double up. I love mm -hmm. that. I could definitely see him going. And he talks about BPA. That's another thing. We know he goes best player available, like you said, based off of his board. At 29, there's going to be a lot of damn good interior interior offensive lineman prospects. So. I believe so, too. Yeah. And so, yeah, he, he doubled up his first two drafts. Yeah. And mm -hmm. blue chip, really high picks uh, in the defensive line. Then we go to wide receiver, which he showed is a priority with Jamison Williams. But then again, was Jamison Williams more of a game-changing, game-breaking, so he got moved up? I, I think it's yeah. Because yeah. the other wide receivers, if you look with the Rams and obviously – Amon Ra mm -hmm. and, and Antoine Green, but then the Cooper Cups of the world and even Josh Reynolds, fourth round pick, Texas A&M back yeah. in the day. I don't know if he prioritizes wide receiver as much as he more so banks on his ability to scout them in an interchangeable offense. Yeah. Like, I don't know if he prioritizes that. So, like, maybe yeah. the offensive line and defensive line get a bump or wide exactly. receiver. Exactly. That's, like, that's why I'm thinking, like, like, regardless of position, because I know position you'll value that too, but, like, Jameson Williams. Game changer, right? Like receiver, yes. But how many end of rounds did he run these past two years? They were They're like, weapons. Goddamn, he, he, right? he quantifies them as weapons. Exactly. Yeah. Same thing with Jameer Gibbs. Multiple weapons. So I think it's just like pound for pound. Who could do it the best? Who, who can get it? Who can make plays? But who maybe, can break, but maybe, who can break a game? And even in the secondary. Has its own horizontal one, maybe. Even in the secondary, yeah. we talk about jokingly the versatility that this defense like or this uh, regime likes to grab, but it's just playmakers. You grab a Kirby Joseph because he's a ball hawk and makes plays. You grab a Brian Branch because anywhere he's on the field, he makes plays. Gibbs makes plays. J-Mo makes plays. Like, you don't need to be confined by a specific position as long as you can go out there and do something to break a game. I was going to make the, the comparison for Kirby and, and if he is. Dude, does he add you to that armory? Do you make a sudden change play on defense or a game-changing play on offense, mm -hmm. and you get a boost. And it's not always uh, the defensive line, offensive line, but he can weaponize our offensive lineman, Ben Johnson can. Yeah. But does he add you to his armory? He's obsessed with adding to his armory. 
who's the guy who makes a game-changing play? Can I bank on five game-changing plays mm-hmm. a game? So wide receiver, maybe not as prioritized among the best DBPA if it comes down to two guys. Obviously, it's offensive line, defense line, maybe wide receiver, not as much. Cornerback is where it gets interesting. Obviously, last offseason, he had to do a facelift on our cornerbacks. And did it, did it kind of Didn't appease? Because bargain bin Brad went to a cheap-ass doctor yes. for that facelift. Yes. Thank you. You should right. up Dr. And he, Miami. And he has done yeah. one hell he of a to job. Dr. Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. He has won one hell of a job this offseason. Dr. Rebolstering our outside cornerback room. Yes. Yes. Carlton Davis, Amik Robertson. Thank you. So he, he prioritizes some degree. What about the draft and develop of it? Because right now, the only cornerbacks he's taken are Efeti Malafanwu, mm-hmm. who we, don't, we kind of pictured maybe him as a I've game changer. I've him as a safety. But yeah, exactly. He was always the, maybe going to be that hybrid middle defender. Yeah, yeah he's a viper he's really, position that Michigan loves. So he loves it, yes. He the bear, blitzes. the bandit, yeah. the viper. Yeah. Exactly. It's and then called the Wolverine. I don't know why. And then he and got Chase Lucas, I'm who, proud. again, he was really kind of more of a nickel um, yeah. when he was at his best college, but he was also more of a special and He was value. late, exactly. Yes. Seventh round pick. Brian Banch was just definitively best player on available. What am I doing? Mm-hmm. But he was also more of a Wolverine. A chess piece. A viper. Slot. Defender. Malcolm Rodriguez. Yes, exactly. You play him in five different positions. You put him all <laughs> over the place. You can... Well, of course, best teamer. So we don't Jaylen have... Jalen Reeves maybe. We don't have any proof, and I just, like, want to put it out there so we're all on the same page, and we kind of addressed it earlier. I do have, like, one, like, I would never overly scrutinize Brett Holmes, and I would really not ever speculate towards him making a bad decision. Mm-hmm. But yeah. one thing that uh, keeps me up at night is if we go into training camp and Emmanuel Mosley is our cornerback third, and we have now gone a full four-year draft cycle with Brad Holmes, not investing a top 100 pick in an outside cornerback. Yeah. Which also is weird because of the like, affinity for cornerbacks. Like, I could watch cornerback play all the time. Mm-hmm. I am I'm a, a savant in the cornerback. I am, yeah, I'm a snub, a snob, snob when it comes I, to cornerbacks. I just think Brad Holmes is trying to do the NFL like the NBA and just make it positionless football. <laughs> and if he could have 11, 6, 6, 230 pound guys out there that's exactly what he'd do and just have everybody in his own but it's he values i think that's what he values the most over anything is playmaking ability if you can go out there if you can break a game i don't care what position you're at i'm gonna draft you high and it's worked out so pro it's worked out so weapons far. versatility like those are the two things yeah. it's like can you check that box and I just, I really want one young cornerback that we draft and develop. I don't care if it's in the third Who is round. that guy in this draft? I, I talked it's to you guys last time. Brad's eyes. Um, all right, two, two to three guys if we don't take one in 29. Because um, last last week we talked about um, Kamari Lasseter, Kool-Aid. Um, we talked about uh, Gerald, Geraldo Green, yeah. uh, the guy from. Gerardo Green, yeah. Yeah, Ger- sorry, Gennaro Green. From Florida State. Yeah. Uh, guys in the second round that could sneak up and surprise that we're not talking about now. Tampa. I like. What was yours? Tampa. You love TJ Tampa. I knew you'd say that. Yeah, Al do. doesn't like him. No, no, it's not that I don't like him. <laughs> I, and I did see a stat after we talked. His hair's stupid. <laughs> when he does really, I have no issues with his hair. When uh, <laughs> when he does his small sample size of man coverage is fine. Yeah. But he does, he's a lot of uh, eyes on the quarterback zone coverage guy and that hybrid Iowa fair. State defense. All right. So there's not as much tape of him playing it. That's fair. Which we still don't know. If he gets picked, I'm going to celebrate with you. But Elijah Jones uh, from Boston College, mm. he has the length, the aggressiveness, the press, the speed. He ended up developing ball skills uh, this last year. I think he had five yeah. picks after, like, none. Okay. So Elijah Jones from Boston College is another lengthy, uh, similar mold of green and some of the guys we talked about last episode. And then um, – uh, Ennis Rackstraw's junior's teammate, Chris Abram Strains. Yeah. I think he's another guy at 61 we could take at cornerback. So I've been so locked in on Rackstraw. Can you give me a break, your breakdown, I guess, of uh, Abrams? That's why I wanted to come on today. <laughs> so I want to talk about day two, guys. I love day two more than day one. I, it, it gets a lot more. He's, uh, he is... Uh, Wait, this isn't a baseball, Nick. We got to go to break. We got to go to break. Next, we we always go. Down. We'll be right back. But first, let me tell you about the QB challenge presented by Shake Shack. If you could throw it on a rope, you can go to this year's home opener. The QB challenge presented by Shake Shack. Just scan that QR code right there or go into any Shake Shack location or go to WilbertSports.com and you can sign up to be a part of the QB challenge to win two tickets to this year's home opener. It's the Shake Shack QB challenge. Congratulations to the real coach of the year.
Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Glorious Cannabis Glorious. has a new ice water bubble hash pre-rolled now with diamonds. Glorious. Constantly pushing to create the best cannabis experience. The perfect boost comes with the added pure THC diamond dust. Allowing flower with only the highest terms. <laughs> making the best even better. Glorious Cannabis. Check us out at your local Glorious. retail. <laughs> or visit us at GloriousCanna.com. <laughs> what? Deaf? Nick just pressed glorious like 12 times while Chris is trying to I can't hear him. Must have the wrong headphones. No, I waited for the right time, so we still got the read through. Yeah. Shout out, Chris. Um, all right. No, that was fun. That so, was fire. Abrams, what, what is your takeaways? Because I haven't, I have done zero on him, Matt, to be honest with you. I've seen I, the name. I haven't film studied him. I just read and listened a lot about him. Right okay. now, I'm literally film studying offensive line, and that's, I'll only get to the trenches by in the next month. But uh, something I've heard, read about trusted sources. For Chris Abrams Drain, the cornerback opposite uh, Enos Rakeshaw Jr. at Missouri, is one, he runs at Missouri defense, which was a lot of fun to watch last year. Yeah. Two is his IQ. Three is his instincts. Four is his versatility. Spence, I believe we were talking about the value on versatility. Versatility. Versa big al itality. Yeah. Um, <laughs> those are some of his traits. <laughs> is he was a productive player. What are we giggling now? The, the Versa dad big al itality. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. So Chris Abrams Jane We're all for dad jokes is here. not someone I'd be surprised if we take him at 61 and he's cornerback 11, 10 in the draft. Okay. He's a productive player that offers IQ. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, one of the smartest cornerbacks this draft, one of the best instincts. Um, he's not, not overly athletic. Yeah. But, like, got his IQ if he got in a room with, uh, with Aaron Glenn. And, He'd impress and him. He, yeah, yeah, he's going to get impressed. So he's someone. Who, and then Elijah else? Jones from Boston College is someone I really like. And I'm kind of honing in on, like Green, is, like, I think he's a guy that could surprise, who's not being talked about now, um, but could surprise as a Detroit Lions uh, huge crush by our front office. Huge crushes. I love pause. Are you going to say Jackson Powers Johnson or Cooley McKinstry? No, but there's a Jackson there, Kyrie. Kyrie Jackson of Oregon. Okay, I'm cool with that. I'm yeah. on board. But I don't know if he falls. I feel like he's going to get taken in between 29 and 61. But if he falls to us, you and me, let's run and announce it for Roger. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, for sure. I'm down. Yeah, Kyrie Jackson, I think, also, Spider-Man meme, fits <laughs> a lot of these guys that, like, maybe not the most athletic, but has that length has press, and is able to mirror and match, uh, kind of run that man coverage we've been wanting to run. Second favorite sport? Uh, is there a sport other than football? Uh, <laughs> Love it. No, I like, I like college basketball. College basketball. Second yeah. favorite team other than the Lions? Uh, I like... Spartans don't count. Yeah, yeah that's football a, team. NFL team. Or just any team. Hey, how no, about NFL the team. Spartans? I, it's that? my question. He NFL doesn't team, but, have a second team. Uh... I mean, I, I just admire good teams. Okay. Um, I, I, I like the Buffalo Bills and what they've done. I like, obviously, Kansas City. I like the, watching the Patriots. I'm a big, like, NFL historian. So one of my favorite teams ever is the 1970s Steelers. I love reading about that. I'm a big Mo Mean Joe Green guy. Um, just had a Terry Bradshaw doc on three nights ago. <laughs> oh, my yeah. wife was making dinner, and she's too. a fan of Terry. Yeah, I like Terry, yeah. I'm a yeah. fan of Terry. Well, I, I love how he, like, was, like, He's got some hot a dickhead dogs. for the first couple of years, and they're like, "Yeah, the blonde bomber." They're just all over him afterwards. Exactly. Um, if you could fist fight any athlete and trade lives with him and mm. or salaries, who would it be? Fight to the death. Fight if to I the death. win, I get his salary. You get his yes. life. You get his like, life yeah, his... and or salary, whatever you prefer. Yeah. Well, but you have to win in a fight. <laughs> to the this death. is a really interesting speed dating question. Actually, <laughs> yeah, it is. This is the easiest question of all. 
Uh, don't give him an answer. Oh, yeah. Let him answer first. Lino Messi. No, let him answer first. Messi? I'm beating the fuck out of him. I don't know any soccer let him players. Answer, like, I'm dude. literally he's running like, through he's my like road. 5 3. Kadarius Tony. Okay. Hey. Messi Bryce gets Young. paid way. I, I was going to go to long snapper, then I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to fight any long snapper. Like Kadarius Tony got hands. I'm not going to lie. I'm doing. He, yeah, he's he, he definitely does not have. He can't hands. catch them, so he just yeah. throws them. You know what I mean? I, I have a blind spot for special teams kickers, punters, remembering all of their names in colleges, but one of them. I feel like I can kick. I, I can kick the shit out of maybe one kicker in this league, and that's it for me. Favorite food. Favorite food. Like, I like it's your my birthday. Last, and wifey's like, I'm cooking up whatever you want. Meal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Last meal. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm a big uh, day two NFL draft steak and potatoes guy. <laughs> Day two. What a sicko. NFL. Apollo is. said NFL player. It snuck bro. NFL into his food answer. <laughs> All right, if, if it's only NFL players, who are you choosing? What? This fight? Oh, yeah. Apollo said only NFL player. Bro. Bryce Young. What's that dude on uh, Bryce Young? Yeah, Bryce yeah. Young. Yeah. Now he's got bodyguards that they, they signed right. for. They'll be my bodyguards after Ooh. I. Bryce Young or Kyler Murray? Yeah. Who would you rather You work for me everywhere. now. Bryce Young? Yeah, because Kyler Murray, I feel Bryce like he's around. Spend my I don't know if you've been Bryce keeping up with it, but four two. Sadly, the bad guys, the Broncos, leading the Spartans. Ooh. Eighteen oh. minutes left. Sparty needs to get a strong third period here if they want to advance in the Frozen. Oh. Last last question. Well, it's a series. It's not. Just it's a series. Yeah. What? Yeah. Are you serious? Wait, that's two out of three. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you serious? in Missouri? Is, it? Is, this? Is, so, yeah. Is that factual? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Know Are we getting nachos is. at the show? Question number three. Question number three. You got to go home. The wife, you gonna be in trouble. Um, I'm not getting. I'm in not any trouble. you. I, yeah, yeah, you're always You're asking me if I'll get nachos. Are we get nachos this? and? Yeah, I'd love to get nachos with you after this. Where are we headed? Chris, are we getting nachos after <laughs> the show? I'm down. Spinny? Yeah. Oh uh, no, I actually have plans. Huh? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> oh, I, that was the most <laughs> unconvincing. <laughs> I'm going to the movies. No. I'm already going to. Godzilla and King Kong. Godzilla. Wow. The new one. That's fair. Yeah. Everybody Love unfollow Spinny right, on X. So what do you? Hey, what do you guys think is gonna Call happen? Piece of shit that he, he is. He doesn't sell cars. So it's is it gonna be cars. is it gonna be a new King Kong? That's like the premise because like it's the last same time thing they pulled out time. the last time they pulled out the it's old Godzilla, the see. Robo Godzilla. What's gonna know. happen this time? All I know is there's gonna be giant fucking monsters fighting and it's gonna be sick. If but do, that'll do it for us. You know it's better. For Appreciate friendship. you all tapping in to the wolf. Wait, 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 wait. We have a, any last words, Al? Shout your Twitter actually or at football guy underscore Al. Check him out. I need to know for the audio listeners. It's not a series. They say fuck. All right. Let's idiot. go Spartans. But go watch Godzilla. That, you that I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go watch Godzilla. But that'll do it for us today. Appreciate you all tapping in the world with heavyweights. Make sure you smash that like button. Rest in peace, John Claus. We'll yeah. miss you, brother. Happy birthday. For Easy, for Chris, for Al, for Nick, Rest for Spencer, peace, John, for the heavyweights. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter. We'll see you guys on Monday. Peace. This show.